What is up, guys? It is the sports nerd, Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In The Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of NGSC Sports. Guys, remember the website. It's NGSC Sports for all your current sports content. Welcome in. Happy Thursday, everyone out there. Everyone is having a good uh, week so far, as we are now closing in on one more day before we get to the weekend. Um... Just real quick, guys, uh, the show is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. Remember, guys, Zen Spaces begins with you. Um, Be kind to yourself and one another. Um, Guys, real quick, on the bottom of the banner on the screen, if you're wondering, we do have an official Instagram. Please go over there and follow us on Instagram. Uh, it is the Walker Report underscore official. And anybody who wants to um, give us any sponsoring or any kind of uh, help with getting the podcast out there, the web, uh, the excuse me, the email address is the Walker Report underscore official at gmail.com. So head on over there. Anything like that will be fine. Again, it is in the comments um, and stuff like that. Let me bring on, guys, my two esteemed co hosts this evening. Gentlemen, good evening. Hello there. Good evening. How's it going? Um, I don't know who this is because, once again, they don't show their name. So whoever this is, thank Thank you. you. We will keep up our good work. I don't know who that is. (laughs) Thanks for the compliment, though. We kind of went through this last week, guys. Please try to make sure you put your name in there. Yeah. Go in there. (laughs) Go in the description. (laughs) <laughs> and um that's better oh i see what's going on here i'm getting feedback uh yeah go in the description and click on the stream yards and give it permission yeah and you're good I, to just go. I just want to be sure i was straight you know um you know instead of like a crooked angle <laughs> <laughs> good lord yeah but how's it going, guys, so far? To this it week? goes pretty good. All right. Good. good. Well, we are on the uh, precipice of game five in the Eastern Conference Finals. You know it. Um, so that I'm watching you spinning. Of course, I have to mute my TV because I can't uh, have anything going on in the background behind me. Um, but, guys, I mean, we have I, – I, I, oh, it's Kevin. Okay. Thank you, Kev. Mm-hmm. We, we appreciate it. That's uh, Kevin Dixon. Yeah, that's the guy that got me started on this whole. Him and Ralph both were inspirations Same to here. me. Yep. Same. Um, but guys, I have, I have Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR. I mean, I have a Ooh. bunch. Of, I have a, a lot of golf news. I wanted to touch on that. Ooh. We could touch on that later on. Yeah, because there's something I don't understand about that. You I want mean, to start the show? Do you want to go ahead and start it that way? We can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, because I, I want to know. Because I didn't know until a few days ago that the PG had a rival league. All of a sudden, I'm hearing about yeah. this LIV, whatever it is, and it's based in this uh, it's this based on right like outer space or whatever. It's this one right here. It's called yeah, Live yeah. Golf. Uh, it's Live based golf. in Saudi Arabia. Um, it is headed by uh, former PGA Tour uh, superstar Greg Norman is the one who is yeah. in charge of all of this. Shark. The shark himself, uh, yeah, and he's got not only Phil Mickelson, but Bryson DeChambeau and company, Dustin Johnson, Yeah, a bunch of guys have gone over. Patrick Reed is another one who's going over. Um, the PGA Tour. How about Brooksy? Brooksy's going to stay on the PGA Tour. Okay, yeah, because just because if uh, he runs to Bryson, like, no, I don't want anything to do with him. Goodbye. Yes, Kevin, I know this is you. I know he's a big Boston Celtics fan. So, yes, yeah, go, yeah, 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 I know, I know. we'll talk about that later. Um, but, um, yeah, this is the new tour. Uh, the PGA Tour came out earlier this week and is suspending all of the PGA players who have this – or the, excuse me, mm-hmm. former PGA mm-hmm. players that have gone yeah. over um, to the tour. They have decided yeah. to suspend them. Um, so that includes everyone, you know, um, with the U S open coming up next week, I believe next yep, Thursday, Thursday weekend, Thursday starts weekend. The, um, U S open. Um, 
I, I, I did know this. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the Live Golf Tour offered, are you ready for this? Offered Tiger Woods $2 billion, and that's with a B, $2 billion to come over and play on their tour. Is that in our money or their money? That's their money. It's Saudi Arabia. It's not, this has nothing to do with the United States. Oh, then it's worthless in here. They offered they offered Tiger two billion dollars to come play on their tour. Yeah, in their money, in our now, money, that's nothing. Obviously, we know he turned it down because obviously he's not over there, so he's right. not. Yeah, you know, he has no in collection at this time to go over there um, and play. Now he did withdraw from the U.S. Open, so he's not going to play next okay. week. Smart, though. Smart move. Um, I think he needs to rest and get ready for the Open Championship at St Andrews, where he plays quite well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, you know, in um, that golf course, of course, if you guys do not know, St. Andrews is one of the oldest golf courses in the world. Yes. Uh, built back in the 1800s. I mean, it's that old. <laughs> is that 800 or 800 BC? I mean, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's AD. It's not BC. Okay, that would okay. be well, it's, it's old, so I thought maybe it goes back to ancient times. If it was BC, that would be interesting. It would be. <laughs> That just a joke, bro. Just a joke. He is the oldest <laughs> continuously active, active course in the world. Right. Yeah, it's it's I don't know if it's the oldest on the planet or quote it is the oldest on the planet. Okay. Yeah, I just looked at it. It was yep, um, the oldest. Mm. Can I explain why is there an issue in the golf world? I could tell you the one issue right now why they're doing this. It's called money. It's called money, course, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Mula. It's called money. And they're making more money over there right now than they mm-hmm. are on the PGA They offered just like women's yeah. basketball. Yes. Two billion. Minor, for example. Thank you. Two billion dollars in Saudi dollars on the real is um half a half a billion US. Yeah. Really? Half a billion. There you go. So there what you go. 133 million. And some odd change. Hmm. Yeah. I thought it was a lot lower than that. <laughs> you go. I thought it was like about five bucks. <laughs> but again, that's what I'm saying. They're they're going over there because they want more money. Yeah. Um, as with every athlete, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Everyone there are very few athletes in any sport that stay with a team or an organization because right. They don't do that anymore. Now it's where they can get paid the most. And mm-hmm. you know what? At the end of the day, guys, I don't blame them. Because guess no. what? If when it's if, over, it's over. For example, if we had a battle between in the zone and NGSE, whoever offered us more money, I'm going there. And that's yeah. why I'm damn straight when I say that. Because whoever's right. offering yeah. more, us more money to do this, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing it. Sorry. I mean, that's the way life is. Um, right. Unfortunately, that that's how sports has become. But that's how it's always been. That's the way it goes. You know, yeah. that, that's the way that's the way it's it always goes. been about the money. You know, you yeah. say it's a business. I say it's what a about business. loyalty. Does that mean anything? No loyalty. Who gives a f- yeah? I said I don't think there's well, okay. uh, no, there's no that part. There's no loyalty. There's it's about where where can where am I gonna have the best time? Mm-hmm. opportunity to succeed? Mm-hmm. And, and achieve the goals that I have for myself. And 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 where can I, you know, where am I going to compete for champions? If I can't compete for championships, well, I want to get paid. Right, right. I mean, but it wasn't always like that, though. It's always been like that. Are you kidding so? me? Maybe the last thirty years or so, but not when I was young. Come on, this is only because there wasn't the because the big money wasn't there yet, mm. but. It is now. I mean, now. <laughs> it was your name was in the sushis. I only give out donuts. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, Adam. I'm laughing at this comment. I'm sorry, buddy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh in the middle of your comment. I had um, to laugh. <laughs> but Jermaine yeah, was in the sushis demanded a million dollars a year. Right. And they lost their minds in New York. How can you? A million dollars and a new car? Oh, my God. It's always been about the money. It's always been about the fame. And, and you know, Broadway Joe, it was always it's always been about making more than the next guy. Correct. And that's why you left for Los Angeles. Correct. Let me give you guys the list of the 17 players who have been suspended. 
um, so far. I'm pulling up the tweet now. So here are the 17 now. A lot of these guys have already resigned from the PGA Tour. So here's the list. Sergio Garcia has resigned his PGA Tour membership. Wow. You have Taylor Gosh, Brendan Grace has also resigned his membership. Dustin Johnson has resigned his membership. Matt Jones, Martin Keimer, Graham McDowell, Kevin Na have all resigned there. Mm. Yeah. Phil Mickelson, Andy Ogletree, Louis Ustazen. He's also put his mm. resignation in. Um, Turk Petit, I'm not sure who that is. I don't I've never heard of him. Yeah. Ian Poulter, uh, Charles Schwartzel, Hudson Swafford, Peter Eublin, and Lee Westwood. Now you can also add Patrick Reed to that list as well. Yes. Because I heard earlier today he, he has also left the PGA Tour. So at the end of the day, guys, this is the reality. That's wrong. Um, do I have a call-in yeah. number? I do not have a call-in number anymore. No. I'm going to send him the link. Kevin, if you want to – okay. Hang on a second. Let no. me – hang on a second. You want to send him the link? You can come on. Yeah. I didn't ever think yeah. Well, Ke I haven't had Kevin on in a long time, so hang on just a second, well, guys. You, you know, while well, you're doing that, I just kind of want to expand on what I was saying. Go you ahead. Know, like, I, un I understand, you know, the idea of loyalty. I, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I, I do understand it. But I, I just think that it's very rare, even in the 60s and 70s, for players to stay with one team for an extended period. That's why we looked up to those guys that stayed with one team. That's wow. why they were so popular. It's because it was always about getting getting yours. And it's always been about getting ever since big money, ever since money came into the business where yeah. you can make a significant, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, you know, and even earlier than that, but especially, in the, you know, in the 40s and 50s, guys, in the off season, they were farmers and, and, and dock workers and they had other, you know, they had careers. Odd jobs. Doing real work. And then, and then you know in, in, in the '60s and the and you know guys like Joe Namath comes along and they demand bigger and bigger and bigger contracts and you see these guys that get you know they get one <laughs> God I'm dying over here and they get one contract hey, Kevin how's it going buddy what's up guys hey Kevin not too much but um you know, get they get one contract and they're and they're set for life yeah and then. Then it's about chasing championships and, and chasing even bigger paydays. Right. And you see that all throughout the 80s. And and, it, and then, and of course, now, you know, it, the precedent was set in the late 60s and through the 70s. And, and it wasn't this, this idea that it, it's this something new it is to me is false. It's, it's always been that way. It's always been about pursuing better opportunities, whether it be for... Yes rings or money mm -hmm. or opportunities outside of the game whenever you're done playing whether it be in coaching broadcasting or in you know a professional league you know in a, in a, in a profession it's always been that way uh, ever since the late 60s when 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 sports started when the super bowl became the super bowl <laughs> and right. sports, big money and corporations wanted to be seen and seen being associated with the 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 top athletes you know even in the even in the you know in the early days of, of, of you know trading cards you know, it was you know when trading cards were geared for adults and you know they came in cigarette packs yeah it was important you know to to be associated with your with the top flight like honus wagner you know having a honus wagner card was cool and and you right. know you had a brand associated with those with those top star athletes, didn't matter where they played. It was important. It was important to be associated with those top stars, and and so you know, and and when when you when you got too old, <laughs> when you outlived your outlived your usefulness in your original city, and and a, a new team was looking to generate some star power. When you know guys like Joe Namath ending up in in um, L. A. You know, and the Rams trying to establish themselves, and, and and that kind of that kind of thing. You know, that this this idea that it's only been in you know it's it's my generation or you know the generation in between me and the older generation that the guys that started playing in the 80s and 90s 
It's like that was all precedent set by guys that played in the 60s and 70s, but that weren't loyal to a team. <clears throat> If you want me real, if you want me to read real quick, guys, here is Phil Mickelson's tweet about joining the Live Tour. Let okay. me read this to you real quick. Um, first and foremost, I want to apologize to the many people I offended and hurt with my comments a few months ago. I made mistakes in my career and some of the things I said and done. Taking time away and self-reflecting has been very humbling. I need to start prioritizing the people that I love the most and work on becoming a better version of myself. I have spent this time with Amy. If you don't know who Amy is, that's his wife, his wife. and loved ones. I've been engaged in inner intentional, I'm sorry, in intentional and continued therapy and feel healthy and much more at peace. I realize I still have a long way to go, but I'm embracing the work ahead. I'm ready to come back to play the game I love, but after 32 years, a new path is a fresh start. One that is exciting for me at this stage of my career and is clearly transformative, not just for myself, but ideally the game and my peers. I also love the progressive format and think it will be exciting for fans, just as importantly as it will provide balance, allowing me to focus on a healthier approach to life on and off the golf course. I'm incredibly grateful for what the game and the PGA Tour has given me. I would like to think that I've given as well, but now I'm excited about the new opportunity. I'm thrilled to begin with Live Golf, and I appreciate everything, everyone involved. I also intend to play the majors. I fully realize and respect some may disagree with the decision and have strong opinions and emphasize with that. I have renewed spirit and excitement for the game. I'm incredibly grateful for the support of my fans, partners, friends, and peers, and I hope in time those sentiments, relationships, and support continue. So that's Phil's um, Perspective. kind of tweet about what is going on with him going to that tour that it started today in London. Uh, that's their first tournament was in London, England today. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that's where they started. Right. Um, like I said, they, they offer tiger $2 billion. Uh, that I read an article uh, tiger, yes. of course, burned that down. Um, Cause I think if the PJ tour was to lose tiger, that's bad yeah, news. Maybe. Tour. I mean, that's the beat. Yeah, the PGA Tour would be in big, big trouble. Uh, maybe that'd be uh, that'd be the Tiger. The Tiger goes, and they're in big trouble. Uh, hey, hey, Brad, Brad, let me ask you a question. Hmm? So, what what caused these guys to leave the PGA Tour? Um, because I mean, are they not getting endorsements as well as not getting paid? Um. I'm, I'm just because this came out of nowhere. I read it today and I'm like, who is live? And I'm like reading this. I'm like, what is going on? Did I see it on ESPN? So now I'm kind of questioning this stuff right here. I mean, uh, I mean, it is. I, I mean, you would think the PGA would like the competition. Um, but again, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, a lot of these guys got endorsements. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out why you know and then i heard that the pga was pen, penalizing some of the guys for leaving i didn't know they had a contract for the pga um so there's a lot of stuff that's coming out about this that you know that i got asked i got questions for um days on on this because this is really um something big here you know what i'm saying because you're gonna lose fans as well and every fan can't go over to to dubai or wherever and watch a golf tournament unless they can see it on TV. But I, I'm just kind of curious why where this all came from out of the blue. It's yeah, been going for a couple of months. Sorry. Bro. Yeah, I, I, I think I think when when it's all said and done, I think it come it comes down to endorsements. Number one, I think is that number two. I think it's tournament pay. I think it's it's it, when you play in a tournament. Um, I think what they said, Kev, the la if, even if you finish last place on the live tour, you're going to make one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Now, you can't tell me there's any PGA Tour event where the last guy is going to walk away with that kind no. of change. No. Uh, so that's another big thing. I actually the funny thing you bring up ESPN. I actually watched. Um, What's the Tony Kornheiser and uh, what the hell? Pardon the interruption. Pardon the interruption. Yeah, yeah, pardon the interruption. And they actually, uh, they actually talked about that. It was like the second topic they brought up on the show today. Obviously, number one was the NBA Finals, but they were talking about how the, you know 
Tony said he watched it on TV today. It's a different way that they look at golf. I think you're going to have a lot of golf fans turn tune over to it. Obviously, like you said, Kev, not every golf fan can make it to Dubai or London or wherever they're going to play. Um, so, yeah, they're going to have to depend a lot on the viewing audience more than their uh, attending audience unless, you know, Dubai, Dubai is a nice city. You know, you have a lot of oil money. Yeah, there's a lot of people there. So, I mean, maybe that's what they're hoping to spread more, in, you know, worldwide on the tour than just going over there for the British Open. They're trying to, you know, expand to Japan and, you know, China. I don't know why you would go to China right now, but China mm -hmm. and, and places like that in the world that don't have – either they can't watch golf on TV and if they can see a live golf oh, in the country. Yeah. So, I, 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 <laughs> what gets me though is you would have thought i mean you think about this it's like almost like a world tour um going from major yeah. countries to major countries yeah you would have thought you would have thought the pga would have came up with an idea like this long time ago um that's it's just it just right. amazes me that, well golf that has so many going, big traditions going on um it just amazes me that that the pga is this far behind and something like this i mean you 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 think about it like um uh not nascar but um uh what's the other one F1? the the F formula, formula one? one i mean that you know look how they go all over the country you know I, i'm just amazed yeah. that pga never thought about this before right um, it, it, it yeah. wow this, this, I, this, I think this, the, i think the big thing about the pga tour is they have so many baked in traditions places that they have to play and, and you know the big you know the masters is always at augusta right always you know and and so you know you can't move, you can't move the masters from augusta never i think the live tour here coming along it allows them to play in other places other places in the in the world you know uh, places like china and vietnam and 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 uh and in the, in the middle east um, and then what today's tournament was in London, and they have all that uh, Saudi oil money. I believe that if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the um <laughs> the <clears throat> God the uh, the the organizer of the, uh, some kind of a Saudi oil baron. He has all this oil money, correct. and that's where that's where all the money is coming from. And um, and from what I was reading, Dustin Johnson is set to make 140 million dollars from just being a part of the tour wow, and that's right. therein lies the rub tiger woods has made 121 million dollars being in the pg mm -hmm. hey good god i am terrible today i apologize and and dustin johnson's set to make they from what i was reading and and based on what bradley was saying is that they offered him uh two billion dollar two billion in saudi money which accumulates out to through five hundred and thirty-three million dollars, yes, half so a yes. billion dollars. You know, that's Patrick Mahomes kind of money, right? You're you're looking at you're looking at top flight NFL player money. There's a lot of money being thrown around, and it, it again, you know, like we were saying at the beginning of the show, it all comes down to dollars and cents. If NGSC and the um, I'm forgive me here, who's the other one we were saying? So, that's Kevin's. That's Kevin's. Kevin's right yeah, here. if if you guys got into a bidding war for the show, and whoever offered us a better deal, it, it, it you know it's a better deal, more money, better time slot, you know, more opportunities, whatever, whatever is the, the incentive that brings us over, and generally speaking, it's going to be money, you know, and and these these rich Saudi auto auto uh, oil barons have money to piss away, and so they're going to spend it. You know, you can't take it with you. Might as well spend it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that that was the mistake that the uh, Egyptian kings made. You know, they went to in their tomb with all their gold. So you right. can't you can't spend it when you're dead. You know. So no. yeah. Right. Exactly. And they, you know, it's building a legacy. You know, it, it's having something to pass on to your 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 family, your kids, your grandkids. Sure. You know. Yeah, if this thing, you know, you think about how, how long the PGA has been around. It's been around, what, 80, 90, 100 years now? Something like that, yes. And that's a legacy. It's a legacy that, that, that the, the founders of the PGA were able to pass on to their kids and their grandkids and now their great-grandkids at this point. 
and maybe even a couple great greats down the way. And and so, you know, you're looking, you know, rich guys have you can only buy so many Audis. You can own you can only own so many yachts before you know you you know a yacht is a yacht is a yacht. How many guys own a, a professional sports team or league? You know, it's creating a legacy, and I think I think that's really I think that's what it's what it's at about at the end of the day is is creating a legacy that you can hand down to your kids. That's not that's not just being a rich ass oil baron. But and also what I heard today is that they're going to have a minor tour, um, mm. like the Corn Ferry Tour, like the PJ Tour has the Corn Ferry Tour. Right. Um, actually, I and I heard this today too. There was a college kid who just came mm. out of college and got one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to go over to live to play golf uh-huh. that, right out of college. Dude. So if you can't, right. you can't make the PJ Tour. So you struggle. You go to the Corn Ferry right. Tour. You make jump change and you go yeah. right there you can make money right away and and maybe big money pj tour because i you know you know probably end up happening is they're either going to do something where they're going to combine them or they're going to have okay well you want to go play because again there's the european tour as well and the pj tour lets the players play on the european tour unfortunately the european tour can't compete money wise with this tour it's not even no. close not even close. right not at all so, and all they do is play in Europe. They don't play in London, in Dubai, in you know Japan, you know the Philippines, Indonesia. They don't play anywhere there. Where this tour plans on playing around the world and bringing golf right. to countries that probably, at the end of the day, okay, golf is an expensive sport to play. I've been playing since I was five. I can tell yeah. you right now, it's not a cheap sport. Clubs are not cheap. Equipment is mm-hmm. not cheap. At Even all. the golf balls aren't cheap. Yeah, it's yeah, they're not cheap. I wrote an article for Ralph a few months ago about that. You again, it's it's not a sport that is very cheap to play. It, you can't. It's not, and it's unfortunate because it's a great sport. And I wish there was a way that we could get a lot more people. Yeah. Even no matter where where you come from, monetary wise, whether you are rich, mm-hmm. middle class, blue collar worker, to poor living paycheck to paycheck or whatever i wish the sport was available for everyone to play and there are ways to do it except the problem is people watch tv they watch the pga tour they watch lpga they watch this tour they think oh i can go out and buy the same golf clubs they do and i'm going to be an instant tour star doesn't happen it takes years and hours of practice and you gotta have practice you got to have money for clubs, money to play. Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. have all of that. And that's, I mean, I'm playing this weekend at Disney, but what I'm saying okay. is it's, it's hard. And I wish, I wish the sport was more this sport and hockey is another one that's really expensive too. I mm-hmm. wish that there was more of an opportunity for people that don't come from money, given the opportunity to play sports. Like yeah, this. They're more there, are, there are programs out there that try to get youth, or as people get older, they bring them in. But at the end of the right. day, it's hard. It, it's an, it's just an expensive sport. And, and, and so it's generating excitement. Yes, in the game, because it, you know you can you can offer somebody you can if a twelve year old isn't excited about the game, it doesn't matter how many times you get them up at five a.m. to go hit mm-hmm. hit drives. If they don't care about it, they're gonna they're gonna quit. They're gonna quit. Too. And and I think the other thing is is that uh, golf is a sport of elitists. There are so many snobby, stuck up people <laughs> who are part of golf. Yeah. Oh, that's, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. I, I can tell you that. It's the same way. It's the same way in a lot so of. Brandy, are you stuck up? <laughs> I, no, I'm not stuck up. No, I I can I can say Uh-oh. this. I can say this. I have played with every level of player. I've played with a champion tour, which is a senior tour player, Ooh. all the way down to a beginning player. And I can tell you that I would never treat anyone differently. Uh, my uncle, who passed away six years ago, seven years ago, taught me how to play the game when I was young. And I have followed his footsteps on teaching people the right way to play, 
Don't treat people well, with don't disrespect. Sound a lot of, you don't if, you're not, if you're not any good, it's hard to be. It's Golf is a hard sport to have fun at if you're not good. It is. Right. And, that, and that's very true. That's very true. You no, know, like, I, you know, I, and it's I, mean, I, I tried it once before. Um, I was in San Antonio, Texas at a, at a military school. And I, when I got to ninth hole, I was tired. Mm-hmm. I said, I said, I'm tired of chasing this doggone ball around. Uh, I, yeah, we, didn't have no, we didn't have no card, so we was walking. So when, yeah. we got to, when we got to the ninth hole and it was beer, I said, I'll meet y'all at the 18th because I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, he's not wrong. No. He's not right. wrong. Right. You know, I only play nine. I drink two beers, smoke a cigar, and I go into the clubhouse and keep drinking. That's how I play nine holes. If I break 90 on nine, I'm happy. You bring you a trailer from Holy Moly, you know? Right? I, I play. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big. I, I'm not a big fan of of um. I'm not a big fan of uh. What is the hell is that that shit called now? Mini golf. I, it just it's not. It, I suck at putting anyway. So why would I want to play? I don't. You know, a whole 18, 18 holes of putting. You know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna go to the driving range and hit and hit and hit the ball as hard as I can. And and that that to me, you know, if I'm not playing eight, if I'm not playing eighteen or nine, um, and you usually I play nine because it's, it's it is cheaper. It's cheaper to play nine, right? And it's to me, it's a lot more fun, you know. And being you know over twenty one, I can drink. So get a couple of beers from the pro shop on my way out the door, and I smoke a cigar on the on the course, and you know I have a good time. And then when the nine holes is up, you know I spent like eighty dollars, mm-hmm. you know if I you know. At the time, I had I had clubs, you know, so thirty dollars for a round, you know, thirty dollars for nine plus car, and um, you know, and a, you know, you know, twenty twenty five for a couple beers and and a cigar, you know, and so I had a good time. Oh, cigar. Uh, but other than that, you know, and you know, there's such a there's such a, a level, you know, if you're not spending, if you don't spend five grand on new clubs every year. You don't. Are you really even playing? You know, you might as well not even bother putting uh, putting your pants yeah. on in the morning. You're not gonna put the effort. Forget it. You know, that's what I mean by you know the elitist mentality. It's 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 prevalent in all all of those hobbies. You know, hunting and fishing and and model trains and 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 just and in models in general. You know, if you're not spending ten grand every year on on the hobby, you you're not actually you don't actually care. No, not really. And 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 kind of the point that I was making. Was that if you don't, you know, it's so hard to get it, you know, if it, you know, you get your, your 12 year old son out there or daughter, um, you know, and they are having, you know, they're, they're, they can't hit anything, you know, they can't square anything up. Everything's left or it's right or, you know, it's water in the woods, you know, and it, and it's spending 10, 15 minutes looking for the ball. You know, and then not finding it, having to take a drop, and you know, now now you're costing yourself, now it costs even more money mm-hmm. because you lost twelve balls and you only brought ten with you. Yeah. You know. I've had I've had rounds like that with people I've played with. And now it's not fun. Yeah. Don't bring it up. No it's ball. Fun. It's it's not it's Don't it's not it. fun. I mean, yeah. and you know, young people and 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 how fast paced this world is right now. Yes, it is. It's everything is you know, instant, instant. You know, and, and golf is not a, is golf is is not a fast sport. Golf right. is just, it's 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 very deliberate. You right. play golf deliberately, and and slow and steady is how you play golf. Right. Get up, you. you, you a lot just, of yes, it's very and, and and the world is not set up for that kind of patience anymore. Yeah. Everything is right now, and it's not it's not young people. It's not the fault. It's just the way the world is right now. Everything, yep. everything is built around. Everything uh, was the world changed when pages were were invented, and an instant communication, and yep. instant knowledge. It, it, you know the ability to oh, look no. something up in a second, and no, and 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 just no right now, right now, no. And the way golf is played is you hit the ball. Right, and you, and then you, and then you wait until everybody else hits the ball, and then you, right, you go and you find your ball, and you, and then you, and you hit your next shot. Mm-hmm. And 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 you could, if you're playing in a four-man scramble, let's say the four of us are playing, 
and, and we're playing best shot. All four of us hit off the tee box, and we go to that, and, and let's say Kev had the best shot. So we play from Kev's ball. Everybody right. picks up and play from Kev's ball. Well, yeah, we're going over to the match. We, we don't know who's – we won't know who has best shot until we get up there. And so when you're trying to tell a 13-year-old to be patient and to wait yeah. and let everyone else have a turn before it's their turn, you know, before it's time, you know, they had their turn, they were the first one to hit. And now you, and now they have to wait. Whereas where everything else is so instantaneous in their life, you can yeah. skip through anything. You don't have to wait. And it's just the way the world has been set up now over the last 20 or 30 years. And, 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 and getting them to be patient, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, you know, the other sports, you know, soccer being a prime example, soccer is always, it's, it's always going. You're always doing something. You're either you're running there, you're running here, you're running there, you're running over there, you're running here, you're running there, you're running over there. You know, even if you don't have the ball, you're still moving, you're still engaged. You know, you know, football. You know, even if you don't have the ball, you're still engaged. You're 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 trying to get yourself open. You're you're trying to make a block. You know, baseball isn't is kind of in that same ballpark with with um with golf. You know, if if you're not if you're not batting or pitching, you're batting, pitching, catching. You're waiting on the ball to come to you, or you're sitting in the dugout. Yeah. You know, and so and so to get young people yeah. involved in sports that aren't fast paced like football or soccer, it's very difficult. Or hockey. Because especially now, yeah. because because and, and 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 hockey is just too damn expensive. Yeah. If you don't live in the great, if you don't live. In Alaska or Canada, Michigan, Maine, Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, where you can just, where you can play for 20, you know, you go buy an $80 pair of skates, uh, $25 piece of, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a stick for, you know, 50 bucks at, at the local, you know, um, resale shop that has a handful of hockey sticks available and a cup and a pair of gloves. You know, on a you know, if you don't, if you live in like you know, Florida or Tennessee or or New Jersey, where it doesn't, where there's a lot of pond hockey uh, available, you know, when when you have to spend, yes. you, have to have, yes. you have to have a full kit. It's not, it's not like you know, in the '60s and '70s when when you know, you and your buddies would, you know, a forty dollar pair of skates, a twenty five dollar stick, you know, a, a, a literal twig. You know, you know, as they as they they were called back in the day, you know, twig, and you know, and and some old newspaper wadded up and stuffed in your pants, um, and you know, and half a dozen buddies, you know, it, it it's hard to get people engaged in sports because it's so expensive, and if you're not buying the latest and greatest and the newest, you're um, you're 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 looked down upon by the the snobbish elites. But by the switch of backgrounds, I think Bradley would like to move on. Yes, yes. First of all, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about the obviously last night was Game Three of the NBA Finals. But I guess between the Warriors and Celtics, obviously those are two of the original teams in the NBA. Um, Warriors are not. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because they were in Philadelphia, so correct. they are. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys, did you guys see that the uh, the Celtics had the rim two two inches higher? Uh, I did see uh, that. I did yeah. see that. It was a little bit too high. They made them move it. Okay. Move, move it down. Yeah, that was interesting to, to yeah. say the least. To kind of, um, I, I, I watched. You know, the beginning of the game. Obviously, the reason why Boston is winning games is because they can play defense. Um, yeah. You, know, you got Marcus Smart and and uh, you know Jason Tatum and company. Um, oh, yeah, they play just, defense, and you know, Draymond Green only scoring two points does that's not going to help the Warriors. Uh, he's got to be right. more. Can someone tell me what his wife got so mad about last night? Oh, yeah, against yeah. Me? um, are we allowed to share that on the air? I mean, is does it involve anything that we can um, get in trouble? Just the F word. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, they were chanting, fuck, uh, fuck oh, Draymond yeah. Green all night. Oh, yeah, one. I I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I saw her tweet, and yeah, you know, I wasn't. Uh, she was mad because she had her kids at the game and they kept chanting it all night long. Yeah, it's Boston. What do you expect? Nothing more and nothing less. <laughs> so 
so yeah, I was I was wondering what what was said uh, because his wife made a had a tweet. She said that she was yeah. upset. That, uh, but again, when you're in Boston, you have to expect that. I mean, they oh, yeah. they have they very too. they're very passionate fans. I don't care what sport it is, if it's the Celtics, mm-hmm. the Patriots, the Red Sox, or the Bruins, they they will let you know they are hardcore fans. It Nothing doesn't have to. It doesn't even have to be a sport. No. Yeah. Pizza, donuts, I mean, whatever. And they're they're super passionate about anything from yeah. Boston. Boston exactly. Market. I mean, you go to Boston, it's the best. Your lo- the loggers, too. Your beer loggers. Because remember, yeah. 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 remember yeah. it's yeah. from Boston. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Yeah. I had to do it. I had I mean, they're, they're very passionate about everything from, from their area. Even beer. Well, here's my question. So, so Steph had an injury. Is he going to be ready for Game Four? Yes, I, know. Right? Yes. I haven't heard anything about him being out. It's been confirmed. Um, he is going to play in Game Four tomorrow. Okay, he is going. He is going to play. Yep. He is going to play. Okay. okay. I, 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 I think, I think there is. I think he's. I think there's an injury to him, but he's going to try to play through it. Um, okay. Yeah, because he said that he I, injured I the same. Same ankle um, mm-hmm. when he came to Boston before, and he okay. set out set out uh, set out for the rest of the season for that. So um, uh, yeah, it, I, I think it may be more serious than what he's given on, um, but I think mm-hmm. he'll probably try to play. Um, what is you guys' opinion so far on Clay Thompson since he's come back from his injury? I I think Clay's going to have a great game Friday night. He's Oh yeah, he he he, got- he 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 found the groove um, last night in scoring. Um, hopefully, he can do it again. Because uh, without him, without him, Kyrie, I mean Kyrie, Curry has has no help at all. Um, yeah, it's it's not. It don't look good. And 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 you know, Curry looks tired. Random guys was yeah, he does hold, hold on his shorts. Um, Last night, and it um, it, they they just look they look tired, man. And, mm-hmm. and um, they are gonna need it, not 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 because I'm a Celtic fan, but they they don't look they don't look really good right now. And then they have that third quarter that they really do dominate, but yeah. then the fourth quarter they like they're really slowing they down. Like right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They. They got it down to it was eighty eighty two at one point, and then mm-hmm. Boston finally put the clamps on it and and, and walked away with it. Um, mm-hmm. what it's just Boston was shooting better last night. Boston outshot um, Gold State. Definitely better than Game Two, that's for sure. And I think I I said I said Warriors in seven the whole way. I think it's going to go back and forth the whole the whole time. Yes. Well, see, and that's the thing too. Boston hasn't been able to win two games back to back. They dominate, right. and they, and they, they, they. I don't know what happens again. Maybe it's exhaustion at the, at the time of the season. I know they talked about last night on the broadcast before on on NBA Countdown on ESPN. Mm-hmm. They were talking about um, shortening the season, possibly shortening the season or changing the season. Um, I'm interested to see what they're going to do. I mean, uh, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they have the best commissioner in all sports. I really do. Cool. I really think that he's the best out of the four. Um, with the way he runs his league, he's done a very good job with keeping keeping the league. I mean, it, if there's a way of saying this properly, keeping the league clean. They're not nice. really hear any bad news about the NBA um, overall, and not that the NHL, NFL, and 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 you know. MLB or that way too, but I'm just saying that you don't hear yeah. a lot of negative. Well, you don't have NBA very often. You don't have someone in the NBA with 24 civil suits pressed against them. So no, oh, yeah, no. that's yeah, that's well. What was it? What did I did I see something today that he's like 66 women that have come forward now? 66. Yeah, 66 is the last time we checked. Could be more by now. Jesus. Right, uh, give it an hour. There'll be another three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the NBA guys, it goes back Boston tomorrow night game number yeah. four with the four. Celtics up two games to one. 
Um, if Boston does win, they'll go back to San Francisco up three games to one. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think game obviously game four is huge. Every game's huge, but if yeah. Boston wins tomorrow night, that's going to start to get interesting too. You know, game four. Boston, I, I just don't see the Warriors coming back from three, three, one. No, it'll it'll be just too demoralizing. No, Boston did it. I well, I, I had the Celtics at seven, so we'll see how that ends up playing it, out. It, I, I, it, I, I, if Golden State wins tomorrow, this is going. This is going to go seven games, but yeah. there's going to be a lot of question marks on this because, again, Golden State looks they they they, it looked like they just can't look tired. They cannot. They look really yeah. tired, and I mean they look old, um, and yeah. It, yeah, it just yeah. it, it just to me, I I don't want to believe sports is fixed, but I think you know there is some fixture in sports uh, when it comes to certain things um but i don't i it just if Golden state wins that game and if it's, if it's a blowout then i you know i'm like yeah it's gonna go seven because now it'll go back to golden state and like you said um bradley boston hasn't won two games in a row yet but they never they haven't lost two games in a row yet so it, it, it's right. going through the it's, it is just, it's the same format as before, so if Game Seven would be in Golden State, then the the mm-hmm. odds would be for Boston to win because it'd be the other it'd be the opposite game of them losing it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I I I just I'm gonna say this about basketball. I don't. I'm old school and I don't like the direction it's going in. And you talked about um, shortening mm-hmm. the season. I've I've always said that the season should be shortened. I think they should start um, after Thanksgiving. Um, I think you get more quality basketball played. I think you have less um, less um, load management done because every game is going to matter. Um, and you yeah. had, now you look at the, look at it sometimes they'll say, "Oh well, it doesn't matter if we get a home court advantage or not." Um, but I think it matters now in the playoffs that you get that home court advantage because if it is a game seven, then you get that game at home. Um, and you think about what Milwaukee did, the game they gave up so that Boston would have to play Brooklyn because they didn't want to play Brooklyn, and they ended up with the home court advance in game seven. I guarantee you, Milwaukee, if they rethought that, they would have thought twice about that and might have won that game that they needed to win. So it, I think it does matter. Um, I don't think they're going to shorten the season. And these guys are complaining about a lot of nothing because you think about this. Um 82 games, you have very few back – most teams, the most back-to-backs they may have during the season may be 20, okay? Um, they play almost every other day. Then All-Star break, they're off for a whole week. Um, they got their own personal planes. They got their own chefs. They got their mm-hmm. own workout partners. They got everything they need to, to, to be good at basketball. Um, when you think about guys back in the 60s and even the 70s, and even the eighties, they they to fly on a plane with, um, with other people, or they had to ride the bus. Right. Um, they played back to backs, um, and they didn't have the facility that these these guys have now. They didn't and, have the knowledge, know, and you and right. they don't you they never complained about it. You, uh, Calvin Murphy, I remember he played. He had a concussion. He played with a helmet on. I remember Joe okay. Henderson had a neck break. Had a neck brace on playing basketball in, in real games. And I'm like, you guys have a you have a hang now and you don't want to play. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, Kev, do you think that the game has gotten softer? Because, I mean, yes, I remember yes. my, my favorite player is Reggie Miller. And during that, you know, with the Knicks and the Pacers, um, you know, with, with Jordan, obviously, with the, with the Bulls and all that stuff and that run that they had with the six championships. And then you had Kobe. And then kind of changed when Kobe came in, the game kind of changed, and now it's changed again, where now I think a lot of times now they rely more on the three ball than they do a center. You don't see Shaquille O'Neal. You don't see, at, you know, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You don't see guys well, like everybody that. everybody can shoot. Yeah. yeah. Everybody can shoot. The it, game has exactly. changed. Be, because the center, the center position has changed so much because everybody can shoot. Yeah. Because everybody grew up wanting to be, you know, wanting to be Kobe. Right. You can, I, and you I, know, I and, think- and if you're if you're not if you're not 
if you're under, you know, if you're six five to six eight, you gotta have a jump shot. Otherwise, you're not making the NBA. You got to be able to shoot. That three point line is kind of. I think the three point line is kind of hurt hurt the NBA uh, because everybody everybody wants to shoot the three, and yeah. the analytics says the more you shoot, the more you make. Um, just if you think about it was last year, I think, um, or year before last, um, Houston shot like 30, they, they missed like 34 threes in a row in a playoff game. And you would have thought at some point in time, them guys would have just said, okay, let me shoot a two, but they kept shooting threes. And I think that, well, that I think that really hurts the game of basketball now because, um, everybody can, every, the majority player on your team could probably shoot the three. But can they shoot at a high rate? If you're not shooting at thirty, if you're not shooting at thirty-eight percent or above, then you you need to question your shot shot selection. Yes. And, and I'm and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one more thing about this. So, as a as a basketball coach, I should tell my girls. I was like, yo, if we're up nine, shoot the two because that means we're up eleven. So mentally, in in just in high school basketball, mentally you're down by eleven points. So when you're down by double digits, they look at like it's really hard to come 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 back that, but if you but if you shoot a three and you're up, if if you shoot a three and you're up by nine you miss and they go down shoot a three now you're up by six it changed that changes the whole scenario of, of the game of basketball yes you know and nobody really thinks of yeah. it like that but if you if you really think about it that that shooting a three really turns the game around for the opposite team that misses or makes it yeah, but the thing the thing about it is is that that shot from eighteen to the fifteen to eighteen and eighteen to twenty three, from from fifteen to twenty three, they're not they're not you're not making you don't have a a better percentage. The percentage is about the same. It's within within um one percent from from fifteen to twenty three. So you might as well just shoot the three because if if the fifteen footer the eighteen footer isn't gonna go in anyway. You might as well shoot the twenty-three, because if that one goes in, then you're going to you you get an extra point. And so that's what the Spurs. Yeah, were but doing. let me ask, let, but let me ask you a question. So if you're shooting a three and you if you shoot the, uh -oh. yeah, okay. Well, I think he was going to ask, uh, and and when he comes back, I'll, I'll okay. Please. There he's back. Yeah, there. So you quit, and then he's gone. Um, the thing about it is, is that the percentages are negligible from 15 to 23. So you might as well just shoot the three. If you can't get to eight foot, that's what the what the Spurs were doing in the early in the, the mid 2000s when that's when fair. Duncan and Parker and Ginobili were there were the big three in in um, San Antonio was they were. It was either a it was either a, a three or a layup. You'd oh, either you'd yeah. either lay it in from two foot or yes. shoot the three yeah. because because from eight to to twenty one is the same as negligible percentages. And and so if you don't have if you don't have a good look from underneath the basket, kick it to the corner, let someone take a three. Because yes, you have yeah. the same percentage, because the percentages from from fifteen to twenty three are negligible, so you might as well shoot the three. Because even if you if you miss from fifteen, you miss the two. But if you make from twenty three, you've made three. So your your percentage your percentages are are within the margin of error, but your point total goes up by one. So that's why more teams are shooting three. If you if you miss thirty four shots from two, you've missed thirty four. You missed thirty four two pointers. But right. if you make one three pointer, you've made one more than you've scored one more point than your than the other team. Do you understand? Does that make any sense? And I know it sounded sense. convoluted as hell in my own head. No, I, no, it makes really sense to be honest. You know, if you if you shoot twenty shots, right, yes. from 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 the, from inside the arc, and you make zero, you you've scored zero points. Right. But if right. you attempt twenty five, if you accept fifty 
from the three point from outside the arc and you make one, you've made you scored three points. The volume is higher, but you actually outscored what you would make from a closer shot. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, that, that's what I'm saying is that the, the the analytics says the more you shoot, the more you make. But then you got you got teams is out there shooting threes, not making them. And if they would shoot a two every now and then, they're still and they play if they play defense, they're going to catch up sooner or later. It's just that you can't allow the other team to keep shooting threes. But if you're no. the, but if you're a, a team for analytics, it does it does that does make sense. But let me let me let me say one more thing about the you know is that the other team is allowed to make plays, so if the if the other team is going to take everything from nineteen to, to eight away and only leave you with threes because you're not getting you're bricking every single one of them you don't have any other options no. you know let's 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 just step let's take a step back here and 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 and, and analyze this beyond just the numbers right we can look at percentages. We can look at, at scoring plays and, and and all that, but if, if we're not accounting for the fact that the other team gets to make plays as well, and I think this is something that's lost on a lot of fans, is that the other team is allowed to attempt to make plays. And and so if, if that if that eighteen to, to fifteen footer isn't there, if the other team is, is committed to taking that away and, and knows that you can't that you're not you know and then that that Rockets example, they missed thirty four. I, I remember that. I think that was in, they missed like thirty four three yeah, three pointers. Zero for thirty four, I believe, is what it was. You're over thirty one. Uh, Kevin's right. But if you're not gonna, you know, if 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 I know you can't hit it, I'm gonna give that to you all night. I'm gonna force you to make that, you know, to beat me. You know, if it's not there. I'm going to take everything else away. I'm going to take anything of the underneath stuff away. I'm going to take your mid-range away. And I'm going to force you to brick every single freaking shot. Because I know it's not going to go in. If you miss five in a row, okay, that's a fluke. You miss ten in a row, that's a tradition. Yeah. And I'm going to force you to attempt as many threes as I can. You know, and if there's, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, if there's, if there, you can, you know, want in one hand shit in the other and see which one fills up faster. You yes, can want yeah. to shoot all the 18 footers in the world. But if I'm going to, but if I know that you can't make the, the, the 23 footer, I'm going to be more than happy to let you attempt them and go down and get my own points. You know, you know, you know, what's the first thing to go on, on, on a basketball player? And they shoot jump shots with their legs. And if you watched yes. that game last night, um, before before Curry got hurt, but you could see that he was tired because mm-hmm. he was doing all he can do. He he's probably the best three point shooter in 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 the playoffs right now. Clay Thompson got hot last night um, yes. because he was he was getting open shots, but once Boston figured it out and they closed. Out of three point, then he had no shot. So what they had, to, what what they based because that's what they're based. They're, that's what they based their team on. But also, Golden State is a good team that w- don't always take a three. They will take a two as well. But the league itself is going going forward. With I mean, they're even th- they're even talking about putting a four point line in, which is not which is nonsense in my opinion. I don't think that would work. Yeah, I've heard them. I've heard I've heard some people kick around that idea. It's not very smart, if you ask me. I mean, this three-point, I mean, that has become a bit easier in recent years. They moved it back a little bit, then moved it forward, then moved it back. Where would you throw the four-point line? That would be uh, that'd be too difficult to make. Hey, God, it was good talking to you. My wife walked in the door like she wanted something, so let me go find out what <laughs> she what she wanted. Because I always get the last word, yes, dear. <laughs> That's the right hey, word right there. That's hey, the right word. coming on. We appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, so yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, we'll it's we it take that. away so much from the other team, we get so caught up in the numbers and looking at percentages, and we forget that the other team is allowed to at least attempt, you know, is at least att- allowed to attempt to make a play. You know, you, know, you put the, ba- the baseball background up, yeah, and it, it's really you know, the, the, the baseball is the only is the only sport where the defense has the ball. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And so, so you know, the defense is allowed to make a play. They're allowed to at least attempt. And, and you know, if you're going to brick every shot from 25 to, to 23, I'm going to let you shoot all day. If you're chasing that ball that's down in the dirt, yeah. half a foot off the plate, I'm going to put it there until you hit the sum bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hit it. Well, Here's the thing. I mean, I, obviously, you guys have heard there's been two managers fired the last week. Joe Girardi I'm got fired, yeah. in Philadelphia, and Joe Mann got fired in yep. uh, Anaheim. Uh, the losing streak for the Angels has moved, I think, to 14 games. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of hoping yeah. tonight's 15. Uh, one, more game, one more game. Because um, the Red Sox are in town, so they can lose one more game. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. To Boston, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brad. Yeah, I, I, I did nothing right home out either. You know. No, no, it's no. I mean, nah. It, it's I. You know that Otani's oh, pitching tonight, so I, you know, I'm yeah, well, yeah. Angels will bounce back. He's pitching. He's yeah. got a three ninety nine ERA, which Ooh. it's not bad. It's not, not great. Bad. It's not Good. bad. That's not, pretty trash. Not bad. But I mean, that's where he's at right now. I, like I, I always thought that a sub three. To to be considered a good to be considered a good pitcher, I, I've always felt that should be sub three. Yes. Yeah. So at least at least three fifty. Yeah, I mean, so the Red Sox are there, won eight games in a row. Hopefully nine tonight. If not, it you know it is what it is. We're back over five hundred. That's what I wanted it to do. Five hundred. Um, the Yankees have a seven game lead on the. Jays and Rays. The Rays um, swept the Cardinals earlier today. Chopped the Kansas Field. Um, I saw that they had won. I guess they they Two took one, some right? controversy. Yeah, they took some controversy. Um, as we all know, it is Pride Month. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, the Rays had their um, Pride Night. I guess there were five players that did not wear the patch. That the other players wore due to their religion um, mm. and their faith. So mm-hmm. again, I'm not I'm not getting on here to be political or anything like that. We don't keep you know politics on this show. You well, should have the right to say my religion will not allow me to do that. Not that I'm against it, but my religion will not does not allow me to to do it and leave it alone. Yeah, I I kind of feel like if the if the manager of the uh, of the Giants can. Is allowed to protest and Gabe not Gabriel. come out to the national anthem. Gabe you know, Gabriel. it's all fair. You know, either all of it goes or none of it goes. Because yep. if these right. guys, I don't agree with them. I disagree with them completely. You know, I, I, I you know, I'm okay. I, I'm of two minds because Pride Month is stupid to me because yes. being gay isn't an accomplishment. How can you be prideful in being gay? It's just what you are. Mm-hmm. I get the whole idea of wanting representation and not wanting to be beaten for being gay just because I'm gay. You know, I get that. I get that. But but being so gay is an accomplishment. Being gay isn't something you've done. No. You know, it's just what you are. You know, and I get mm-hmm. representation and not wanting to be assaulted and insulted. And I'm not trying to insult anyone at all. You know, I, I think at being all. gay or whatever, it's whatever. You know, you're not trying to sleep with me, so I don't give a shit. You know, and you know, if you are trying to sleep with me, well, call me. You know, <laughs> yes. I'm on fire. I am on. Fire. I was gonna say we can we can we can pivot from that. I do have yeah. Let's let's pivot. Uh, Cy Young, Cy Young odds so far. Again, okay. I know it's halfway through the oh. season. Who do you guys believe is the AL favorite to win the Cy Young this year so far? I don't know, honestly. Uh, He's a I'm former really- Tiger. He's what a former Detroit Tiger. I will give you that hint. He's a former Detroit Tiger. Seems great, odd. great former Detroit Tiger. <clears throat> Verlander. There you go. Justin yeah, Verlander is the favorite. Verlander is the favorite so far. Yeah. Um, he's six. What's that time when they were good? Two point two three ERA over sixty four point two innings. So he definitely is. And here are the top five. Five pitchers that are are as viewed to possibly um, also win it. Shane McClanahan, who's the Rays pitcher, that's their mm-hmm. ace. 
He's got a 2.10 ERA and 89 strikeouts, which leads baseball. Um, Garrett Cole is is listed down. Good choice, good choice. Uh, Nestor Cortez is listed down. Yes. Um, Kevin Guzman of Toronto is also listed. Um, LK Mahona, I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm not pronouncing that last name correct. M A N O A H. He plays just for the Blue Jays. I can't pronounce that last name. I'm not sure. Mohana, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Um, but that is who they have. This is Yahoo that I'm reading this off of. Um, and Martin Perez is also in there as well. Now, okay. the right. NL Cy Young, who do you think the NL Cy Young favorite is so far? Just off a of chance. Any, um, any? Hmm. What, I, will what, give you, I will give you this. He plays in the NL Central. So I'll narrow it down to that. Plays in the NL Central. I'm going to go a complete shot, 100% shot in the dark. Probably wrong because I'm usually wrong. Adam Wainwright. I'll go Wainwright, too. Adam Wainwright's a good one, but that's not the correct answer. It's Corbin right. Burns, the kid from uh, Milwaukee. Burns. Is the okay. Winner so far. Yeah. Uh, but let me yeah, see who the thinking. contenders are. These are the contenders. You have Joe Musgrove, uh, Sandy Alcatron. I think he okay. pitches for the Marlins, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Carlos Rondon, mm. Pablo Lopez, and then the um, – you have Walker Bueller, Zach Wheeler, Max Frey, and Zach Galen are all also listed down. Jacob DeGrom would open the season, but he's hurt. So yes. he has to be. Mm-hmm. Let's go fire without him. So, yeah. And the Mets are, what are they up? Like 12 games in the NL East right now? Yeah. They're, way, they're blowing the Braves out of the water right now so far through in the season. Didn't need and to pay him. Well, and you can, you can thank one person, Buck Showalter, because since he's gotten yes. there, the whole complexity of the Mets has changed. Well, the, well, the Braves didn't need to pay Freddie Freeman. Let him well, walk. Let him walk. Yeah, Freddie Freeman left. Yep. Freddie Freeloader. How about a Mets hey. Yankees World Series? How about that? We can have it's that. Been done, so why not? First time it's played two years. Series. What, what about what about um, what Mets uh, Mets uh, Red Sox? Rematch at 86. 86. The 86 World Series. Yes. Padre loses the ball. Oh, no. Well, everybody forgets that was actually – that was game six. I know. Yes, that wasn't game seven. That was right. game six. That would have been even worse. Six. Yeah. yeah was we need – I was thinking we need to do a have an 80s night. Um, at least an 80s night at our, at our school. I guess I'm like, oh, no. We can do that. We can do. We can do eras if you want. We can start. I I think that would be fun. I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't grow up in the eighties. I grew up with the eighties. Thank God. So so everything uh, the eighties. I would love to to spend a couple hours with with Lewis and uh, and just be pick careful. Up. You might regret it. Yeah, I I I spend two hours with you every week, and I regret every every minute. So thank you. So, you're here still. <laughs> so. Uh, so no. Okay, um, who wrote that joke? Mm. Uh, I don't know, but I'm gonna fire him. Um, yeah, I get some better writers. I know, right? We need, just need writers in general. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say, say these. Well, remember, yeah. remember, this show is unscripted, and we're suffering for it. You're suffering with us. Yes. Yes, I yes. know. <laughs> um, I've had a very time with the root canal. Oh. Ugh. Um, the jokes write themselves. They probably yeah. shouldn't, but they do. Yes, yeah. just like on my show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wrote an interesting article today on uh, okay. Insider.com. This is yeah, seventeen yeah. things F1 and NASCAR should steal from each other. Okay. 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 Drivers better. Okay, so things NASCAR should steal from F1. Number okay. one, fewer cars. Fewer cars. Fewer cars. Uh, now, the Shrash races have 36 to 37 cars, but that number can reach 40. On oh, the super speed, yeah. like Daytona 500, even in smaller numbers, there are too many teams, too many cars, and not and they're not competitive. Right. Agreed. And even fans would have difficulty picking out of a lineup. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I That's not fair to – because F1 has their fair share of backmarker teams in, in and of themselves. So, mm-hmm. continue. Right. 
Uh, number two is simplify the point system. I think this point system is finally simplified. Yeah. Um, I, I, number, I don't think – I think – okay. I'm no, sorry. sorry. Uh, number three is bring back the season-long points championship. No. Okay. No. No? No. No. Uh -huh. Have you ever – you've never been to a playoff – Go, no, to a, go to Dover. Go to Dover. In Dover, Dover. The first Dover race. Go to the playoff Dover race. I believe Dover's in the playoffs. Or go to the Richmond playoff race. Or go to a – I've been to a playoff race. Okay. And it was bumper to bumper, wheel to wheel for 188 laps. They didn't let up for a second. It was the most intense auto racing I have ever witnessed. Whether it doesn't, I've been to short tracks. I've been to MIS. I, I, I will if I can get a chance to go to Dega again this year. I'm gonna go. It was the most incredible, incredible racing I've ever witnessed. They were bumper to bumper, door to door. They, they strung out for ten laps. Then somebody made a bold move. Everybody sucked up, and they were wheel to wheel again. It was incredible. Wow! So the RC probably on a weekend. Oh, oh. I, um, yeah, number number four is in the broadcast. It says uh, F1's graphics are what's, cleaner. What's that? Can you repeat class. yourself, please? Um, improve the race broad, broad, broadcast. Yeah. I guess make logos a little okay. bit better, I guess. I'm not sure how you do that. I yeah. I like I, I like yeah. I like the Fox I like the Fox guys. Um number five is shorter races. Yeah. Nope. F1 races are often 90 to 100 minutes. It cannot exceed two hours. Um, number six is podiums. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a podium. One, two, three. The top three starter, the top three finishers get on, uh, are considered the, the top uh, three. Right, right. Are the podium winner, you know, they end up on the podium. Um, make the drivers and teams more recognizable. NASCAR has a sponsorship you... probably yeah. impact mm -hmm. fan base. Um, yeah. Number eight is different tire compounds. I think we talked about that. Okay. Yesterday. Um, number nine is better scheduling. One thing that has made F1 easier right. for American fans is to embrace. Um, oh, what is this? We got. I thought you couldn't come on. I thought you couldn't come on there, dude. Well, I got everything uh, done that I had to get done. Cool. Hey, Julia. Hey, Lou. Yeah. And number 10 is Drive to Survive. Which yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Now, I here's what that. Formula One should steal from NASCAR. So this is okay. the flip side of it. Uh -huh. um, better grid is what they're noticing as the number one thing that F1 should steal from NASCAR. Um, number, like two, start. number two, overtime. Yeah. Yes. Number three, throwback races. That would be interesting. Oh, I like that. I like that. Number four, an oval track for F1. There's no way you could have F1 on an oval track. No way. Too that, fast. That'd be insane. Um, Maybe number, Indy. You might be able yeah. to get away with it at Indy. They used to run it in Indy in the 60s and 70s. In the 50s and 60s, they used to run it. They right. ran a companion race with the Indy 500. Number five is side-by-side -side rolling restarts. That would be cool. In F1? Um, I, I like... I'm I'm a NASCAR. I'm a Jimmy Johnson hat on. So this Born is the Jimmy bread. Johnson seven times. Born and bred uh, NASCAR fan right here. That's right. Um, no work on cars during red flags. I don't. Isn't that? I huh? didn't know they could do. They could work on their cars on red flags. And no. Either did I. I don't. They can. It's not something I've ever. NASCAR. Do so, they do that in NASCAR or do they not do no. that? No. They don't do that in NASCAR. Never been able to work on your car under red flag. No. Um, okay. Number seven is crank it up. Crank it up. Crank it up uh, so, no. Yeah. No. It, it was. That's it was, what. That's the article right there. <laughs> it, was, it was. The novelty of the crank it up has worn off for me. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm Adam. I don't think we've ever met. I'm if Gerald. I, I have uh, I do a show on on here too on Thursday nights called Game Winning Sports Talk. Show. Okay. Yep. Gerald Gerald's got a good show. I was on there. I was just observing. I didn't do any talking while I was on there. I will do it next week. Fine, yeah. sir. Um, but I, I too. 
I uh, he does a heck of a job. They were talking, yes, good topics while I was on there. They were talking about the Denver Broncos, which we can talk about later on. Yeah, let's, yeah we can detail. jump over. Right. Right. You guys want to go to the NFL? Yeah, let's yeah. Let's go. Go. We usually go okay. to the NFL about now anyway. We finish the show off on the NFL. If there's anything left, then we will hit whatever we haven't gotten to yet. Mm, okay. So here is the National Football League. We are we're in the monetary or the uh, mandatory three day mini camp that a lot of the teams mm-hmm. have now. Um, Tom Brady spoke today at Tampa Bay about his relationship with Bruce Arians. Uh, there was no beef. He continues to say there's no beef between the two of them. I don't know. I I, mm-hmm. I haven't. Being that I you know being here in Tampa, we you know again I listen to talk radio every morning to and from work and that's the biggest thing the biggest topic was it was tom's day to talk and we wanted to hear what tom had to say um so he said there was no beef between him and bruce uh he's looking forward to playing under under uh todd bowles this year Um, obviously we'll see how the difference between the two of them is um but like we were talking earlier, uh, like Gerald was mentioning, the Walmart owns the Denver Broncos. They 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 bought. Yes. The team. Correct me if I'm wrong. For four billion dollars or four point six. Four point four point six billion. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of freaking money. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wish I had half of that. I wish I had a half of that. Speaking of, making, speaking of making money, Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup got paid by the Rams. Yes, they too. Did. Both of them. They sure did. Yeah. Both those Cha-ching. guys got paid. Well, That's you know what they were saying to the bank was, ching Yeah. yeah. Yep. We, we, we've, I don't know if we've ever addressed it on this show or not, but one thing that they were talking about is, you know, the, the Rams broke the mold. And they, they, they right. bought a championship. Well, if they bought a championship, they just they just bought the future too. Mm-hmm. Yes, because Aaron Donald became the highest paid non quarterback in the National Football League. Yeah, so he's the highest yep. paid player that's not wearing or not a quarterback. In the mm-hmm. National yeah, it's not up under center. And you have, I mean, that and the funny thing is that team's not going away because you got Matthew Stafford. You got that team just is not going away. They're not Matthew's going to go. probably got another good five years left in him, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if anybody that I was happy for to see finally get a championship, it was him. I mean, yeah. He played his heart out in Detroit, did everything he There's could. About time. And then some. And then some. And just could not. They Would they win one playoff game? They, no. They make it to the postseason. While they made three there. playoff games, lost all three of them. Lost yeah. all three of them. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. They brought championships to the Rams of Los Angeles. I mean, they won one, but it was in St. Louis. I mean, this was something that LA has been waiting for since, you know, the end of the dinosaur era. Could, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're exactly right. They didn't win a championship. Well, almost the dinosaur era, but still. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think yeah, the last time uh, the Bronx, I mean, the Lions won a championship is when Megatron was there. They haven't won a championship since 1957. Oh, okay. Even before that. Yeah, that was well, yeah, they, they, the last, the they, they, won, they won the last title in 1957. Yeah. They won back-to-back titles in 54 and 55, and then they won uh, they won their third title in 57, and then in 58 they traded Bobby Lane to the uh, to the Steelers, and uh, Lane said on his way out that the, the, he cursed the team. They wouldn't win another champion. They wouldn't win a championship for another 50 years, and that was – 70 years ago now? 60 that kind of reminds me of another team. Yeah. And Lou, you know you know who I'm talking about. Our favorite one of our favorite teams, the Dallas Cowboys. Right. <laughs> Haven't won since 94. 95. Ever, ever since ever since uh ever since they fired Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. I keep telling big everybody mistake. it was a big mistake. I keep telling everybody it's the Johnson curse. Yes. Well, well then yeah. remember now they, they did win one Super Bowl under Barry Switzer. Now they yeah, didn't, yeah. didn't have to build but after team. that, team you're right, Gerald. After they yeah. fired Jimmy Johnson, it, it was it's been downhill ever Never since. Never been the same. Never been once, the same. Once Jimmy, once once Jimmy got what Barry got exposed when he had to build his own team. Right. Mm-hmm. Once all those guys that Jimmy brought in, look, you know, and then they they, they started getting old, and 
they they just couldn't fight. They couldn't. Michael got hurt, and and Emmett was getting old, and and Troy was getting old, and that old line wasn't the same. They Troy was there. Larry, um, Larry Allen. Yeah, yeah. so that offensive yeah. line was outstanding. And they, and they got they started, they started all started getting long in the tooth. And well, Barry Switzer wasn't that great of a coach anyway. Mark Stepnowski, he was another one that got old. Yeah, yep. and the defense, the defense, and then the the, the 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 other thing that that hit right right at that same time was the salary cap, yep. and you couldn't just buy all the best players anymore. And and Jerry hasn't been able to figure it out. You know, he's been GM, he's yeah. been owner and GM for thirty years, and ever since you can't buy all the best players, when 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 the NFL just decided that the best thing for the league was going to be parity. And and you couldn't just buy the best players right. every year, and you know poach all the best talent. Was, that's what they did in '95. Was they they got they got Dion, and mm. um, and and you know they they beat the Steelers and and um, oh is it Neil O'Donnell? Is that the Steelers quarterback in '95? Yep. Yeah, sure yeah. Neil, sure. oh, Neil, Neil throws the bad pick. He throws that pick six at the in the in the middle Very of proud. the um. Middle of third quarter, and Larry and uh, and and the Steelers never could recover. Yeah. Yep. I keep saying that Jerry Jones. I mean, Jer uh, Jerry Jones has dementia. <laughs> he might. Maybe he does. Jerry Jones has Jerry Jones itis. He yeah. he, sm he sniffs his own farts. <laughs> there you go. He, he sniffs his own. Okay, okay. He's high. And he's, he's, he don't get high on your own supply. He he's been tooting right. his own horn for. For a third, he thinks he's the, the 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 second coming of something amazing, you know. Because because no, I him, what what he he doesn't give Jimmy Johnson enough credit for what Jimmy did in the in the end of the eight. You know the the faith that Jimmy put in Troy Aikman. That's in in eighty eight they drafted. I don't remember. I'm not going to be able to come come up with his name. But in in eighty eight they draft the quarterback. His name is escaping me right now. And then in 89, they turn around and they draft uh, Troy Aikman. Yeah. And they yeah. go 1-15 one and one and 15 with Troy Aikman in 89. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy puts his face in Troy Aikman because he sees something there. And then that's when they sent Herschel Walker to um, Minnesota. 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 And everybody said, you're crazy. What the hell are you doing? You have no no idea. And um, Steve Walsh? Was that was it Steve, Steve Wall? Steve that that Wall. sounds right. Yeah, Steve they drafted Steve Wall in '88. They drafted in '88, and in '89 they drafted Aikman. Correct. Steve Wall. And and then they traded Herschel Walker away, and everybody said, "What are you doing? You're crazy. This is insane." And they built. They they they. You, Jerry trusted Jimmy with the keys to the car. And then and then they in '94, '94 Jimmy's in or, or um, Jimmy. Jerry, Jerry's in a bar drinking, and somebody says that it's Jerry Jimmy's team, and Jerry goes, "Oh hell no! Anybody can win with these guys," and they and he fired Jimmy on the and he fires Jimmy, just to make a proof point. And it may I, I'm forgive me if I'm getting the story not quite right, but how's he getting it right? Um, mm -hmm. and he brings in Barry Switzer from Oklahoma, and and they went they they get knocked out in '94. They don't they. Make it to the NFC title game against Washington. That doesn't sound right, but San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the year. Young, yeah, that's when young Steve team. Young finally finally gets the money out. Ninety four, and he goes off against San Diego, and um and so in the ninety five they bring in um Dion, and they win the title, and and Jerry feels vindicated. And then Barry gets exposed in the in the late night, and then they all get old. Michael gets old, Troy gets old, and they all start retiring. Right. Emmett leaves and goes to um. There it is, right there. Lost to the forty nine. Um, yep. Steve yep. Young because they got Deion Sanders. Yeah, Deion yep. Sanders. That's right. Yep. And 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 then and then all those guys, all those Larry Allen, um. And Leon Lett and all those guys start getting old, uh, and um, Leon Lett, 
And um, <laughs> Leon even... gets a lot of bad for those two those two plays that he made. The one mm-hmm. against Miami and the oh, one against yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. He gets a lot of shit for that. And then rightfully so. Or so Miami. The Miami thing, yeah. Wrong. And everybody told, everybody told Lance, get away from the ball. Don't touch yeah. it. Don't touch yeah. it. Don't touch it. What does he do? And what did he do? He touched it. Freaking touches it. And they yeah. kicked the yeah. field goal game over. But but he was actually a really good defensive lineman outside of those two plays. He was really yeah. good. And but all those guys and and the end of the at the end of the um at the end of the nineties, into the early two thousands, you know, Troy retires, Emmett retire Emmett moves on, Irvin retires, and they can't and, and you know, Jimmy's gone, he goes to Miami and he has minimal success in Miami, but you know, you you can't capture you know lightning in a bottle twice is in, incredibly impossible to capture. I mean, and uh, you know, and so Jimmy goes to Fox, and and you know we know that story, and you know, and the Cowboys have never been able to figure out find the the they haven't been able to adjust. Jerry hasn't been able to ju- to adjust to the salary gap era. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Not at all. That that's that's the that's the down that's the downfall of the Cowboys right there is a salary cap. Mm-hmm. So guys and, and, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and then and then it's it's the uh you know, it's the missing in the in the draft. It's the, yeah. the you know, they draft this guy instead of that guy. And you know, and, and, and you know, and it's not always it's not always that they you know I think I think about the draft. I think about it this way, you know, is um, yeah. Danny Canal was drafted in uh, I want to say '96 or somewhere between '96 and '98 by the. Um, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah, with that. Yeah. Now, Agreed. last year's draft that Dallas had, I say we got lucky when we got Parsons. Yeah. He, he kind of did fall in your lap. Yeah. Yeah, but but the draft is such a crapshoot because and, and, and my point about Danny Canal was right. So he was drafted by the Giants in the in the late nine, mid to late ninety. I want to say ninety six, mm-hmm. right? And the the, the Jets, uh, the Giants, heavily invested in him. And <laughs> so you got a Cowboys hater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's a Cowboy hater. I don't know who that is. Somebody's a Cowboy hater. I wonder who it could be. I'm guessing that's Kevin. I'm gonna guess it, that's Kevin. Yeah, right. so do I. I'm gonna I, guess uh, that's I was gonna say is this uh, Chuck. Also a rabbit here. It's Chuck. Oh, Chuck's, Chuck's a Chuck, Chuck. Chuck's a Chuck is a is a Bucks fan, so that's why. Ah, ah. man. Yeah, he's a Bucks. Well, fan. Brain, never mind. I'm not going to say what I wanted to say because we're on the air. Um, they finally got a goal, bastards. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but to follow to finish up what I was saying about uh Danny Canal is that the Giants heavily invested him in him as a as a quarterback, right? They bought all this video equipment in, they 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 put all this stuff, and they brought in some coaches to help him work with them. And Danny Canal didn't want to put in the work. You know, he just wanted to be a big shot NFL guy and yeah. and he didn't want to actually do the work to be in the NFL. And you know, and so so uh, you know the 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 draft is is kind of you know it, it, it depends on who you get you know like Tom Brady was a six round pick right you know yeah. some guys you, some guys are are a home run you know you know you're getting your you, well you, if I would think with a six round pick though that would be like now yeah, what was the time with this bum you know you know sometimes sometimes you find a dime in the rough like a Cooper you know, you know. guy that goes in the fifth round it's or, worth. But then again, you but you for every Cooper Cup, you have a top, you have a Peyton Manning, you know a guy that's you know a, a can't miss guy, right? And for every can't miss guy, you have a Jamarcus Russell where everybody goes, why the hell are you drafting him? Yeah, this guys are bunk, you know, well, you know, or the Johnny Manziel's of the world, you know, all the physical attributes, but not, but none of the mental. You know, Jake Delone, Jake Delone, you know, Jake Delone was was one or two plays away from being being an all-time great you know if he could just clean up the mistakes but he never could you can't take those one or two plays away Back, sorry. so there's an article guys on these are the 12 teams that have never won a super bowl and they're ranking okay. them by how close they are to winning the super bowl 
So I'll start with number 12 and move down to number one. So I'll start at 12 and move to one. So number 12 is the Houston Texans. So they're the furthest away. That's how they end up. That's kind of what I was thinking. That yeah. this is the number eleven is the Atlanta Falcons. Now they've come okay. close. Dirty birds. Twice they've come Total close. Time. And yeah. they've I mean they're able to win. Close one shots and horse and hand grenades. Number ten is the Lions. Bryce. Um number nine is the Jaguars. Yeah. That's interesting. Number eight is the Carolina Panthers. Yes. Okay. Number seven is the Minnesota Vikings. That's low. Number six is the Titans. Okay. They've come close, one yard short. <laughs> yeah. Number five yeah. is the Cleveland Browns. Okay. Number four is the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Right. And the top three are the defending uh, AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals. Right. Number, six. Uh, number two is the who I think is going to be a stud team this year. Is the Chargers? Uh, Justin yeah. Hubert is going to go off again this year. And <laughs> so, who is the only team that I have not mentioned that has never won a Super Bowl? I have. There's one yeah. team left that I have not mentioned. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Who is the one team that I did not mention that has never won a Super Bowl? Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills. Are number oh, yeah. One. The Buffalo Bills are number one on that list. Here's a guy's uh, kick. I bet. No, guys, wide left. No, I guys. remember watching that Super Bowl. Right, oh, right. So do I. Right here, it was well, it's at the it's at old Tampa Stadium. It wasn't even at Raymond James. The stadium they mm. have now wasn't even it's built yet. So that was the, the difference between Bill Parcells, Bill Parcells being a great coach and just another guy that coached. Yep. Yeah, Buffalo is number one. I, I think the Bills are the closest out of those teams to winning. I it. think Minnesota's too low, personally. I, I think I think Minnesota. Yeah. I, I think Minnesota is going to surprise a lot. I, I think I think Kirk Cousins finally figures it out this year, and, and I think the coaching change in Minnesota will help. Yeah, uh, I've been saying I've been saying for three years they needed to get rid of. Um, now I'm not going to remember his name because he was so forgettable. <laughs> and the coach there. Um, who was their coach? Um. Mm-hmm. On coming up with this guy before him. Uh, um, Mike Zimmer was their head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've been saying I was going to say Mike Zimmer. Yeah, Mike Zimmer. <laughs> so I was coming up with Brad Childers, but he was the guy before Zimmer. Yeah, he was the one right before him. Yeah, he was the one right before him. I, yeah. I, I really think I really think that's that's the um. The reason? The re- I think that I think yeah I, I really think he's held um I think he held Gert Gunn's back. <laughs> Dove and Cook can stay healthy all year. I I think they can be I think they can win the uh, win the North. Well, I mean, the, obviously, the team they got to compete with is Green Bay. Right. Uh, yep. Every everyone has Chicago being in the dumpster the, or the cellar this year. Yeah. Yeah. In the NFC North. Uh, that's who right. I've seen a lot of writers say that Chicago, because they can't protect Justin Fields. And until right. they can protect Justin Fields, it's not going to work. Um, that's the unfortunate part with Chicago. Yeah. Sorry yeah, for all the Bears fans out there, but that's that's the lay of the land. They, they got to protect the quarterback. In a yeah. NFC yeah. East, I see the Giants being, being in the basement. The yeah. Giants. I think the Giants are going to surprise a lot of people. Who, who's going to win the division, Dallas, or is it going to be Philly? I guess. What, who's going to win the East, the NFC yeah. East? Yeah. It's going to come down to Dallas and Philly. Yeah. Dallas yeah. Go to, yeah. I agree with I that. Think, I, I agree with I that. I think it's kind of – I think you got to go even money. I think it goes Dallas, Philly, in the, you know, before the season has started. There's an interesting oh, one. Okay, who has the better season? I would say uh, Trevor. Zach Wilson. I I think Lawrence has the. I think he has he's points to to the break breakout. Sure, I, I think all three of them. 
you know, two is playing for his job, and Wilson and Lawrence both have to have a lot to prove with, the, with their draft, you know, with their draft position, you know. Yeah, but Jacksonville doesn't have an offensive line. No. You know, and and, and Robert Soleil has a lot riding on this season as well. That they can't they can't be two and two and fifteen again. They they have no. to they have to show improve in a a marked improvement over last year. I I think I think um, uh, Jared Golf has a lot riding on this season as well, because I think this is his this is if he if they if the Lions struggle with him under center again, he's he's done. Yes, he won't get another contract. Not into at least not in Detroit, and I don't know where else he could go. I think out of those three right there, I think it's going to be Zach Wilson. Uh, on in all honesty, I think, oh, like I think, like you said, this is Robert. You know, Robert Saleh's got a you know a little bit more riding on the season. Trevor Lawrence doesn't have an offensive line, and Tua, he has just never been the guy in Miami. They didn't want him. They didn't want him. They drafted him. Right. He's not. I mean, I'm not – he's been injured. He obviously was injured when he left Alabama. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, it's uh, – yeah. Oh, I, I, so, the question, Lou, is since we all picked one, you have to break the tie. <laughs> all right. Well, wait. Um, I lost connection, so give me uh, – tell me who you guys picked, and then I'll make my decision. I picked, I picked uh, uh, Wilson. You picked oh, Wilson. 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 And Lawrence. And – and who else? You got Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, to, uh, Tua Tagovailoa, and Zach Wilson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Trevor. Okay, so we got two and two. Okay, that's fine. That's 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 fine. Uh, I, I think it, I think it's very telling that nobody thinks that Tua is gonna be the best. Is gonna have the better season of those three guys. Trevor, I think he's set uh, up. I, to I, 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 <clears throat> I really do. I think he's set up to fail in Miami. I really, honestly, well, I up. agree. Well, I think Miami, what I saw in Miami two years ago when he first got there was that Trevor Lawrence, or, or sorry, shit, um, Tua is not a deep ball guy. He's, he's a short intermediate, you know, 20 and under. And he would be very good in a West Coast extended handoff at that short passing game that's basically a run. And having a couple of quick speed, you know, then Tyreek Hill does help in that. You know, because Tyreek can run a lot of those inside slants and that kind of stuff. But they don't, they really aren't set up to run an offense that, that maximizes his skill. I, I really felt that they needed to find an offensive coordinator that does a lot of short and intermediate stuff, lots of slants and dig routes and, and comebackers that were going to, that would, that where Tua wouldn't have to try and throw the ball 40 plus yards, because I just don't think that's his bag. And, and I think it's unfortunate that, you know, so many coaches, they look at him and go, well, you got to throw the deep ball. He doesn't have the deep ball. So, Taylor, you know, I think that's what makes Bill Belichick such a great coach is that he tailors his, his schemes to fit what his personnel can do in a given year. I've been saying it for a decade is what makes Bill Belichick so good. Yes. Aside from all the cheating, of course. Is that he? Uh, <laughs> that, actually, that's that's, actually, that's a that was Tom Patriot Brady that was cheating. Talking. That was Tom Brady that was cheating. Is, is that is that? No, it wasn't. It was Bill Belichick. Belichick had a lot to do with, do with it. The, the yeah. spying. Yeah, Belichick had the spying thing. And and Teddy Bridgewater. I think Tony Bridgewater is good, is is very comparable to Tua. Maybe yep. with a little bit stronger arm. Bridgewater's better. I want to say so. I thought he was better in Minnesota. I thought he was better in Minnesota, but he struggled in Denver. Well, he beat the Cowboys in Denver. Yeah, he, he did, but then yeah. again, he didn't. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I mean, the Cowboys beat themselves, so you know. Uh, that's true. Let's 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 run it on let's run it on on third down with twenty seconds left of the game and no timeouts. Brilliant, Mike freaking McCarthy. Brilliant. Just like that 49er game. 
Yeah. Yep. Well, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say you you were talking, but just about Bill Belichick. I read an article mm-hmm. the other day that this will be the first year that the Patriots are not relevant, and I have to I have to laugh about that because yeah. everyone has been they've been writing them off for twenty years. Years, years. And every year they write them off. Yep. I remember in 20, uh, <coughs> 2019, 2018, whichever year it was. They were three and they were one and three, and it just lost to the Lions. Yes, and I remember that. Matt, Matt yep. Patricia, Matt Patricia had beaten them, and you know, and the Lions were on the up and coming, and they were the Lions were two and one, and and the the Patriots were one and three, and and uh, and you know, and and it's the end for Bill Belichick. It's the end of the Patriots dynasty, and the evil empire just kept on trucking, and and, and you know, last. Uh, 2020 was a down year. You know, they missed the playoffs. Can't but last it. year they bounced back. They needed a little bit, you know, they, they need a piece here, a piece there, a piece here. Did they do everything I thought they should have in the offseason? No. Should they? I thought they needed a weapon. I thought they really should have gone and got. Um, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Bridgewater is a, is a great game manager. And game manager is a dirty word, but it's not fair. Right. I'd rather have a game manager than a gunslinger. Yeah. Give me a guy, give me a guy that's not going to lose me the game. I can that's do a lot with a guy that's not going to throw a bad pick in the fourth quarter. Ask, <laughs> ask, oh. ask, ask right. Minnesota Vikings or Brett Favre. <laughs> yeah. That's that. Yeah. I'm not going to go there. Ooh. Me neither. Alex Smith is such a was so maligned, and it, <coughs> in San Francisco, when he lost to Ka- he lost out to Kaepernick, you know he loses out to uh, Mahomes, you know, and then he gets then he gets absolutely killed in in, in Washington, and um, you know, <coughs> and just his ability to come back, come back player of the year, yeah. Yeah, it, just to get back on the field yeah. for a snap, let alone play in a game. Well, I think, but if, if if you if you look at that injury, it was the same injury that Mackenzie Milton, who now is, mm. is still at Florida State, he was at UCF. Yeah, uh, he got hurt in the, so the first year that I was a credential member for USF football. That was the year I missed the USF UCF game. He got hurt. It was the same injury that Alex Smith suffered. It was same a ruptured – um, what was that? A ruptured um, – Achilles. There you go. Yes, it was yeah. – yeah, it was an artery, like artery like, in your leg that burst. Yeah. Both of them had it happen on the field, and mm-hmm. luckily both of them didn't bleed to death internally because they said that if they could bleed to death internally, yeah. neither one of them luckily were able to come back and both play football. But well, yeah, that those, you know, that that's <laughs> it's the same injury that Joe Theismann had back in what eighty. Correct. There's another, yeah, there's another. I bad think injury. Adam. I think, you, I think you bought up uh, Kaepernick. Did y'all hear that he signed with the Raiders as a backup? Oh, he did sign. Is that official? Oh, he did. Is that official? Okay, I did not hear that. I have not heard. Well, thank that. you for breaking that. I I appreciate. Yeah, tie there game. we go, tie baby. Tie there game. we go. Now we got a tie game. Now we got a tie game. <laughs> now, <it's high> game. <laughs> now we got a tie game. Um, I, Gerald, I didn't hear about that. So, do you, yep. so he signed as a backup. Okay. I heard Derek Carr said he wouldn't mind having him as a teammate. And yeah, that's what Derek thing. Carr said. And you and the other two I know will 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 do this. That's going to be the toughest division <laughs> in football. Yeah. The AFC West will be the toughest division. Because all four of those teams can win. Kansas City, Denver, the the you know, Vegas, all of them. All of them. Now, can especially win. with uh especially with the Raiders having Devontae Adams now. Yes, and that's yeah. a huge <laughs> weapon. Huge weapon. <coughs> that's going that's going to help the Raiders out big time with having Adams. Yeah. yeah. I, I have them winning the division. What do you guys think about this? If Kenny Pickett beats out Trubisky, do, does they do the Steelers release him? I don't think so. It's I don't see take, that happening. 
I don't think Kenny Pickett's going to no, be a no. starter this year. No. I think he's the backup in Pittsburgh. It, I think he should be the starter. I, no, we'll I, think, they, I think they're going to yeah. stick with Mitch as the starter and, no, and, let, no. Kenny sit, and let Kenny sit behind Mitch for about yeah. a year. Yeah. Yep. I, I think that <laughs> might be the best thing. Know what Titties can do and not much. Again, it's, it's, it, again it, it's like with everything else. Like when – Peyton left Indianapolis, and they brought in yeah. – um, oh, Jesus Christ. Andrew Luck. Name? Andrew Luck, thank you. Andrew and Luck. it's going to be it's, – it's the big shoes to fill. So now Kenny Pickett yeah. have to fill Ben Roethlisberger's shoes. That's the way of the, well, the, way of the land. Well, the you know, big, Aaron Rodgers filled Brett Favre's shoes in Green Bay. So yeah. it, 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 it happens. Him. Mac Jones will fill Tom Brady. It's going to happen down the – you know, it has to happen sooner or later. It has to. The, the biggest thing is, <laughs> is remembering that you're not – for both Trubisky and Pick is remembering that they're not um, Ben Roethlisberger. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And just being – you know, Kenny Pickett just being himself and playing his game and not worrying about what everybody else is saying, what the media is saying, what fans are saying. Just right. go out <laughs> – Play your game, do your thing, <coughs> and and being and just being comfortable being Kenny Pickett. Yeah, not worrying no, about exactly. trying to be Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. I mean, Andrew, no, Luck, Andrew Luck wasn't trying to be Peyton Manning. Mac Jones mm-hmm. isn't going to try to be Tom Brady. I mean, it's it, right. You know, Aaron Rodgers was a whole different style right. quarterback yeah. than Brett Favre was. So I mean, it yeah, it, it's yeah. gonna all come down to, like you just said, you're, you don't have to be. Even though you're replacing that individual, you don't have to be like them to be successful. And we all know Pittsburgh is more successful when they have a great defense. They've always been known for the yeah. defense. They always have. Now, yes, I know. During Terry Bradshaw's era, they did have a great offense. Franco Harris, Lynn Swan, go down the list of Hall of Famers that are now in the Hall of Fame for the Steelers. But a lot of times the defense, the good thing about what I like about Pittsburgh, and I'm not a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, but Uh they're coaching. They've only had three or four coaches in their entire existence. Four. Thank you. Four coaches. So that's pretty damn good. That's a good organization to work for. Yeah. Well, you've only had four head coaches in your entire existence. Was it Chuck Knoll, Bill Cowher? Um, Who else? Chuck I Noll. think Lovey Smith. I I know it's. It was, I don't remember who was before Chuck Noll. Chuck yes, Noll, was before Bill Chuck Coward, and um, Mike Tomlin is the current head coach. Right. Also, my life. Yeah, Mike Tomlin is the current head coach. Yeah. Who's my life? Um. Yeah. So there you go. So there's only been four of them that have you know. Call Pittsburgh home. What that's is that's pretty good. Only four, and you know, all the years they've been there, it's you know. Ah, that's that is kind of funny. I, I yeah. nah, 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 I disagree with that. <laughs> I don't know. Good thinking, but... That's a Bucks well, fan talking right coming there. back. That's a Bucks fan talking right there. I just want to let you know that. That's that's Chuck. He's a big Bucks guy. Big Bucks fan. Thank you, Chuck. Oh, that's yeah. right. He's been. Okay. Yeah, he's he's a huge he's been on the show before. We've had him on here before talking yeah. Bucks football. Um Gerald, I'm I'm from Florida, so you'll hear me talk a lot about the Bucks and the USF Bulls and the Gators. Because I'm from the state of Florida. I was born in St. Pete, right across the bridge from Tampa. So I'll be talking. You come on here a lot, I'll be talking a lot about the Buccaneers and all that, because it's I'm in yeah. that that general area. But who's your favorite team? Who's my favorite team? The pay. I'm a Patriot fan. I, I've been a Patriot fan since the Steve Grogan days. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. they I lost can't hold the, that against you. They lost that they lost to the Bears in Super Bowl twenty. <laughs> that was a embarrassing game. That was a very they, embarrassing game. They ran all over us that night. But um, you I, lost I'm a Bucks fan crew. because I grew up. I grew up in Tampa. So I'm a Bucks fan. I used to go a lot when I was a kid to, to to Tampa Stadium. It's now called Raymond James. But I remember watching Walter Payton and the Chicago Bears. A good friend of my dad's who's a 
huge Chicago Bears fan, and I got to go to all the Bucks Bears games every year. The um, late, great Walter Payton. Well, I and he was my favorite quarterback. Yeah, or quarterback running back. I mean, I was a big, always been a big Walt, the big sombrero. Yeah, that is what they used to call that because it used to be shaped like a hat. It was shaped like a big hat. Yes, yes, they were. Yeah. So they finally, as with every other team, you tear it down, you build a new stadium, and now it's Raymond James. And so speaking of that, guys, I don't know, forgot to tell you, they so the Outback Bowl is no longer the Outback Bowl. Right. We talked about that. They got a new sponsor today. Oh, did they? Yeah, ReliaQuest. It's a cybersecurity company. Okay. They're gonna take yeah. over the sponsorship. So we yeah. don't we don't have a couple million dollars to spare. So you know no, we, no, we, <laughs> we were out on the betting pretty early on. Call it the Walker Report Bowl. That we go. We can call it the Walker we, Report. We were, Bowl. we were out on the betting <laughs> pretty early. Here's Bradley, Brad, you know who my who, you know who my college team is. Oh, are on. you are you a Longhorn fan? Yep. You bet. Oh, let me just say something to you because I'm an SEC guy. I want to welcome you guys to the SEC. Because you got oh, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna get rolled over in the SEC. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get smacked. Uh, I think it's a good news. We're not gonna we're not gonna be able to hang with Florida, uh Alabama. I think Georgia, gonna, Georgia's the team you gotta worry about right now. We're I not, think we're not be able to smart. hang with Georgia. I, Georgia. I think I think it was coming one way or the other anyway. Georgia. Because I think that I think that within the next ten years there will be two super conferences, maybe three. I, I agree with that. I, I think that's how it's going to go. I, I think the whole from Texas like from Texas to, to to North Carolina will be one one conference. You'll have the Western. It'll be you know Arizona, New Me- New Mexico, Arizona, you know, um, California, Oregon, with uh, Washington. That is true and, right there. Um, yes, right there. Is. And, then, and then, you know, you have the Midwest and the Northeast, you know. You'll and have – uh, Archie Manning. Yeah, that, that, like I said, if Texas – if, if you can snag Manning, that'll be a huge boon. Well, I have to ask you, Gerald, because you're a Longhorn guy. When you guys do shift over to the SEC, is the rivalry with Oklahoma still going to be there? Because that's, that's the question true. I have to It'll ask. Is it I is heard, it going to be I heard that way? It, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it both ways that it's still going to be there and it's not going to okay. be there. So I don't know. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Oklahoma's moving with you, right? Yes. They're Oklahoma both coming over the SEC. Both coming to yeah, the I SEC. wouldn't. I couldn't imagine them not scheduling Oklahoma every every year. Yeah. But then yeah. again, is it going? Is it still going to be called the Red River Rivalry? Are they going to? I know. No. Why wouldn't it be? It's still on the Red River. It's still yeah, yeah. They're third yeah, just because but... they're moving to the SEC. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be. They're not moving I mean, cities. When the moving guy... universities. Yeah. I heard that uh, Oklahoma is going to be in the same conference as uh, Alabama. So they're going to be in the SEC. I'm imagining by that time the conferences will be done away with. And I don't think I don't. And I don't think. I don't think They're Oklahoma can beat Alabama. I don't think Oklahoma can beat Alabama. No, I don't think so either. Sit there now, no, but no, we don't. No. But by the time that happens, three, three years from now, who knows where we'll be at? Is at some point Nick Saban's either going to die or retire? Right? <laughs> oh, he was so retired and die. I don't know. I don't know if y'all heard this or not, but it came that there's a story that came out saying that he was actually caught buying players. Yeah, yeah they get to well. That's not news. That's uh, Jimbo. Did it. That's Jimbo, that's Jimbo Fisher did firing it. that cannon. That's Jimbo, Jimbo Fisher, Fisher firing fired that off on him. Yeah, I mean, but it's not anything new. We know Urban Meyer did it at Florida. He did it at Ohio State. We know Pete Carroll was buying players at SC. Uh, I yep. mean, Nick Saint. I mean, keeping up with the Joneses is it's not. yeah yeah well i mean the funny thing you you were just mentioning gerald too you were you were talking about the whole thing because it's a and m you know a college station jimbo fisher and the funny thing is we we were talking last week or maybe last week or the week before about sec media day and how they are going, you know, him and uh, Nick Saban are on, are on different days of at SEC Media Day. 
So I, I, I would most likely would never, never think that they'd ever be now. Now here's the thing. Nick Saban, Jimbo has to go to, to Tuscaloosa. I, I don't know how that's going to go. Cause they, you know, they're going to throw things at him in Alabama. They trust me, they will rat him. They are going to give him the absolute shit when he gets to Tuscaloosa. Now, right. the Aggies go in there and beat Alabama, then he can go and say, you know what? Gotcha. That's right. You think you got to gotcha. win. Gotcha. Well, now, here, here's but, a question that that uh, I have. Allegedly. Okay, you know, a and is already in the SEC. Right. Now, we're coming over to the SEC. Now, will that yeah. re- re- reunite the Texas and Texas A&M rivalry? That's why Texas is coming over. Correct. That's exactly why Texas is coming over. I really think – I really – it's because they can't – you know, you can't – you have to be able to schedule Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and, you know, every every year. You have to play those guys because who wants to go to Texas when they're playing – our? you know, sorry, not Arkansas. A, uh, <clears throat> God, if I could speak English, it would help. Who gave me a speaking job? <laughs> Thank God I'm not getting paid for this because I'd have to give them back the money. Yeah, but, you know, who wants to play? Um, you know, you know, if you're, if you're, I'm not sure if you're in Texas, but you know, yes, who, I'm who, in Texas. Is, yes, who yes. are you for reason in Texas now that A&M's gone? And and you know, Missouri. You know, are, are you looking at your? You're not looking your chops to schedule Missouri or right. or the Red Raiders. You know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know you, you're you know if you're sitting there and you've got offers from tech, you know let's say you're you where is um where is AM? They're not AM, sorry, oh, Texas. Oh, uh, where where is uh, the university? You uh, Texas Longhorns is, is in Austin. Austin, you know if you grew up in Austin, right? And you're like, oh Baylor, let's play Baylor, in Kansas, and Kansas State. Woo! Or yeah. I can go. Well, you know, I can be, I can be, uh, I can go to Georgia or Alabama and play for national titles. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but those, those, you know, or for or Ohio State or SC or Oregon, um, you know, or or Notre Dame or Miami, you know, it, it, it's it's so hard to recruit against, you know, or even A and M. Maybe you're gonna stay, at, you know, stay at home. You know, if you're looking at Texas and and Texas A and M, right? And A and M can play. They play Florida. They play Georgia. They play Alabama. You know, year in and year out. Or you play Texas and you go to Missouri, Kansas, Kansas State. Well, Missouri, Missouri's in the SEC, so they're already in the SEC. Exactly. That's my point. You know, if you're if you're a Texas kid and you're getting offers from Texas schools and you've got an offer from Texas and A and M and A and M is already in the SEC, right? And and you're a kid in, you're a kid in Austin, or in Lubbock, or in um, I don't I, I can't remember where um, uh, TCU is now offhand. Waco, Waco. You know if you're no. if you're you're a kid that grew up in the, you know you grew up in the Panhandle, and and you know you're you're looking at Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A and M. You know if one of those schools has is is put an offer, you know, is offering you a scholarship, you know. And A and M is is already in the SEC, and they're gonna go and they're gonna play Alabama, they're gonna play Georgia, they're gonna play Florida. No, and, actually, actually TCU's yeah. in Lubbock, and Baylor's in Waco. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, but you know, if you're one of those, if you're one of those kids, and you're you're looking at <laughs> probably. There are only four conferences. He left the Big Twelve out. He left the Big Twelve out. Is what yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You left the Big Twelve out. Yeah. Well, uh, well after 2024, 2025, there will be no no more Big Twelve. Probably well, but see, see, there's the thing right there. You're you're correct because see, the conference that the USF Bulls are in is the American. They're gonna get now. Yeah. The Big Twelve are gonna get UCF, Houston, Cincinnati. I don't know who else is coming over to the conference. So SMU, maybe SMU. Uh, I think it's Buffalo coming over too. Okay, so I it's somebody along those lines that so the Big 12 is losing two of their premier teams in Texas and Oklahoma. Obviously, that's the conference. Yes, you're gonna get oh, okay. back, but then on top of that, what four are you getting back 
it's not even compared to the two that you're losing to the SEC. So that's the whole thing okay. at the end of the day. It's uh, BYU. BYU. Who the who so BYU USF? Central Florida, Cincinnati, and Houston. Those USF are the, those are the ones that are going. Yep. That are moving over to the Big Twelve. I mean, that's not exactly those. All four of those teams are not worth a Texas or an Oklahoma, not let alone there. Texas and Oklahoma combined. No, nah, yeah, not even in the not even in the same no way universe as no. those those two. God, I love college football. I have to ask you, Gerald. I you know I, again, I'm a I was a USF, so you know we had Charlie Strong. I have to ask you because you're a Texas guy. What was it like as as him being your head coach in Texas? Was it was he so okay? But here's my question. I have to ask this. Was he set up to fail in Texas? Was yes. He okay. He was set up to fail. Okay. For, for two reasons. Okay. And I'll tell you that right now. The boosters okay. and the alumni. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. I I because yeah. the Longhorns are just like the Cowboys. You know how Jerry Jones gets into the cowboy business. Right. Same yes. way with the alumni and the boosters. With the University of Texas, they always want to get into team business. Okay. If you don't know anything about the game, keep your ass out of it. Exactly. I agree, I agree with that. I I wholeheartedly agree with that. I uh, you know let the coaches coach and do their jobs. That's why you bought the coaches in. Correct. That's yeah. what it is. <clears throat> Jerry, Jerry. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Let the let the coach coach the way they're supposed to coach. And stay All the right. heck out of it. I like that idea. Okay. Right there. Yeah, I don't hate it. Playoffs to eight teams. Call it a day for the four of those conferences, champions, and four wild card teams. Okay. I like that. I like that too. I, 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 I like that too. I don't hate it at all. I, I, mean, I think if you, t- if you take the four conference champions, so you take the Big Ten, SEC, Pac-12, and who am I forget the ACC. ACC. Um, if you take those four. Now, look what happened last year. Everybody in college football wanted the Cinderella. So yeah. what did they do? They got Cincinnati in there. That's out of the AAC. Again, I cover USF. So they came out of the AAC. They yeah. went up there. They did the best they could. They We, we knew they weren't going to win. This is not college basketball. We know there's no Cinderella no. stories in college football. It doesn't work like that. Um. But, yeah, I, it, it, when it comes down to it, I hope that the little teams get an opportunity because mm-hmm. it will put them in more in a limelight of no one knew who Cincinnati was. You can't tell me unless you, unless you knew in Ohio or you knew the conference or you've been covering the team that they play against for the last three years. You couldn't tell me who the Cincinnati Bearcats were. Lovey Smith was there. Lovey Smith was there. Or not Lovey Smith. Yeah, or Charlie Strong was there. I'm sorry. He coached Louisville for a while. Yeah. But Cincinnati is what I was saying about the yeah. alumni and the boosters here at the University of Texas. Mm-hmm. Look what they did to Mac Brown. Mac Brown won a national title. Oh, right. run him out on the rail. Yeah, they ran him out. One, one losing season. One bad season. One bad season. And, and they let him go. And look what he's doing in North Carolina. And look what he was in North Carolina. He's he, in North Carolina right he, now. He, yep. team. he has he, he has put the, the he put the back. back on the map, man. Yep. He put, he put the heels back on the map. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure has. Yep. I mean, look at Tom Herman. He we went we went we won four bowls, four or five bowls under him. We went undefeated in bowls. He he okay. couldn't he couldn't get to the national title. So what did the boosters do? Get rid of him. Yeah. Yep. Now, what's going to happen to this coach we have now? If he can't get us to to the national title game in three years, they're going to kick him out. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean that's 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 the bad part about college football is when Anymore. you have a coach, mm-hmm. well, and no matter what they do, if you can't win the big one, they'll get you out. They'll throw they you right out. They'll throw you right out. Mm-hmm. That's the way of the. That's I mean, the way of the team. You know, all or nothing. You know, just like, just like with Mac Brown, he had that one losing season. I would have kept him because I know mm-hmm. he's a winning coach. He got he got me one national title. Let's give him another two to three years on his contract. See if he can bring another one in. 
Yep. Well, you know, yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find the right words here to explain what I'm thinking because, you know, this year coming up, you know, God, I can't wait till September, but, you know, it's, it's about, you know, it's about building on the momentum from last year. You know, we, there's there's a name right there. There's a name that, that doesn't pop up very often. That's true. Vince Young got us that title. Over USC? Yeah. Yep. 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 Beat us, too. I really don't like Vince Young. Well, <laughs> Vince Young yeah. and, uh, and Mac Brown got us, got us that title. Yeah. Beat us in the Rose Bowl, too. Year before I remember that, that play. Yeah. I was sitting on the edge of my bed when, when, uh, when USC took the lead, and I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we we got a minute and a half left in this game. Come on, we got this. And all of a sudden, here goes Vince Young. I'm like, like a man possessed, man. Yep. Right. Yep. And I mean, when he stepped over that goal line and in that and the game clock went off, I'm like, <sighs> yep, yeah. And downtown Austin erupted. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I oh. mean, we had people on top of metro buses shaking them. <laughs> They, were, they just took over downtown. And uh, I, yeah, I, I want to. I want to see at least one more national title here in Austin before I leave this earth. Okay, uh, it's, they. I mean, it, it's college football is interesting. It, it, you never know. You, you just never know. It ends and flows. Yeah, you, you just. Yeah, you never know from year to year. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, Gerald, the, you know, one team you guys want to be every year is Oklahoma. That That's the one team, no matter what, how, the, how it goes. And Adam will say the same thing with Ohio state with me, it's Georgia because Florida, that's our rival is Georgia. Mm-hmm. Now a lot of people will say it's Florida state because it's our in-state rival, but Georgia has always been our rival. Steve Spurrier hated the Bulldog. I, I, I don't have any problem with Georgia. My problem is Tennessee. I have a problem with Knoxville. That's my problem, but that's a different story. I won't get into that. But I, I mean, keep it comes- them, I keep telling the fans, the Longhorn, our, our Longhorn fans, every year, yeah. if we can beat Oklahoma, we have a, we have a good shot at the Big Twelve title. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you know, I, you know, finally, finally, after five years of frustration and futility. We, we we beat Ohio State, right? And and we um, it, this year is as just as much of a make it or break it year as last year was. Right. Exactly. We we can't we we can't go nine and two and lose to you know, nine and three and lose to Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan State. Right. We can't lose to the states. And and you know we've lost so much and, and it's about continuing to we lost Mike McDaniel. We lost Aiden Hutchinson. We lost um David Ojabo. Um we lost uh, Doug Baldwin graduated, you know, and um Daxton Hill's in the NFL now. Uh, we're, we're, we still have a very good team. I mean, we're getting Ronnie Bell back uh, this year. He was out hurt. All oh, I got hurt in the first game, broke his leg. And I really think that would have made a difference to the Georgia game. We just didn't have speed. Yeah. We just couldn't, yeah. we couldn't keep the defense honest, keep the defense. They just teed off. They, they knew we were going to try and run the ball. You know, we ran it down Ohio State's throat. And we said, here we go. This is what we're doing for, for 60 minutes. We're gonna run it right at right at the teeth of the defense if you can stop it. Good luck, and and we beat and we beat the brakes off Ohio State. That that game wasn't as close as it ended up being. They got a couple of garbage time touchdowns when the game was was fixing to get out of hand, and it, they kept it closer than it actually was. And the scoreboard the scoreboard doesn't really reflect how how dominant we were in the Ohio State game. When y'all played Ohio, when y'all played Ohio State that year, wasn't uh, Zeke still with Ohio State? 
Uh, that would have been 2016. Yeah. I was talking yeah. about this year. This year. Uh, back in back in. Uh, um, yeah, that's ooh. it. It's all about the money. Absolutely, that's the but, hands down. We were talking about the. Yeah. But if they don't, again, it goes back to what I was saying about about A and M already being in the SEC. They're already in the SEC. They already play Auburn and to, and LSU and mm-hmm. Florida and Georgia and and, and Alabama and Alabama. You know, Alabama. And and so if you're looking, if you're a kid in, you know, if you're a kid in Texas with any chance of playing. If you're a three star or better, three star or better recruit who has a, a, sig- a chance at playing significant time in major college football, and your your biggest rivals are Oklahoma and the Big Twelve, or Florida, Georgia, Auburn, LSU, Alabama, um, and Alabama. I don't know why I keep blaming on Alabama. Um, you know, you, you know, and you get offers from Texas. Texas Tech and A and M, and you you have aspirations of playing in the NFL one day, and you want to be exposed on national television. Your your first thought should be A and M right now. It really should. Well, and that's to take nothing away from. It's not to take anything away from from Texas, but but that that's a good point. But now, you know, we haven't even got into the SEC yet. And we already taken uh, recruits away from uh, Alabama. Yeah. We already had three that committed to yeah, Alabama yeah, which, last, last season, decommit from Alabama and commit to Texas. Exactly. And, and I think I think as we get closer to that jumping off point, where in 2020, 2023, next year, and and then 2024 or 2025 somewhere in that area is when yeah. it's 2025 when they when they uh, I think it's June 1st 2025 is when they officially can officially join the SEC. Yes. Um. So so as you're recruiting on the recruiting trail for recruiting for 2023 and 2024, you're like, okay, you know, this year, you know, we're stuck in the in the in the Big 12, and next yeah. year, but but by the time you're a junior. And 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 a senior, you'll be playing Florida, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Auburn, Kentucky, Arkansas. All these great teams. Arkansas is on the on the up and coming. They are. They're they're, they're fixing. They're 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 poised to be. They're poised to be back in prominence like they were in the eighties. Oh yeah. Arkansas is a tough team. The only team that I can say in the SEC that's down, that will be down, is Vanderbilt. I, everyone else. Yeah. He's a but good. Vander- Kentucky's Vanderbilt a- is so far down to get up, they would suck. <laughs> they would. They would suck. They need a vet if, if they want to, to get back up. Yeah. An up year for them is winning two games. So, yeah, Kentucky. Mark Stoops is a good head coach. He's got that mm-hmm. team going forward. Josh Heupel at, at Tennessee. He left UCF um, and went to Tennessee. Right. Yeah, they're on the up. Yep. Uh, George is still up there, obviously. Yep. They're the top team the in the reigning SEC. reigning national champions. Uh, the Gators have a new head coach. We'll see how he does this yeah. year. Uh, and Georgia, um, Georgia, yeah, Georgia's definitely the front runner. Alabama, definitely the front runner in the West. LSU, yep. maybe. Uh, well, you know, they got a new head coach. They got a new head coach. They sure did. Yeah. LSU's got a new head coach. Um, Arkansas could be the, the dark horse this year in the SEC. Uh, I, I agree. Um. So yeah, I mean, they're really. I mean, I think uh, who who is the head coach now? He used to be at Notre Dame. Why can't I think of his dang name? Brian Kelly. There you go, Brian Kelly. He's gonna turn it. I mean, again, I I like Coach O. I, I nothing wrong with with Ogeron. I think he oh, just yeah. ran out of time at LSU. I think again, just he, like everybody he had, else, he had he had a lot of scandal hanging around him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, you know, so again, with that, you new head coach, LSU will be back, you know, in the, mm-hmm. in the new, they're going to compete. Old yeah. Miss, Mississippi State could be question marks. They have two crazy they're, head coaches. Lane Kiffin is crazy. And who's the other, who's the guy in Mississippi State? Um, I can see it. Mike Leach. Mike Leach. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mike yeah. Leach. So both of them keep the state of Mississippi interesting because both of those guys right. 
Wait a minute. No, I see, I don't, I don't agree with this. I, I don't agree with, with that. Uh, I, I don't think South with, Carolina uh, is. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma State? Um, I mean, that, was, that was Mike Leach. Do I have the no, wrong name? No, Leach is, Leach is in Mississippi State. Yeah, it's uh, Mike, Gundy. Mike, Mike, Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy. Gundy is the guy in, in Oklahoma State. See, at, out of everything, when Texas and Oklahoma move to the SEC, the team that's going to lose out is Oklahoma State. They're going to lose out because they've lost mm-hmm. both of their rival teams. They've lost mm-hmm. Oklahoma in state. They've lost Texas. So they've lost I'm both of their rivals. I'm going to miss that Oklahoma and Oklahoma State game. I used to watch that every year. Then they will probably end up having every other – they'll schedule those teams every other year. One year will be Texas, one year will be Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's why – okay, that's okay. That's why he said (laughs) that. That makes sense. I think think – See, South Carolina is not that bad of a football team, so I don't know why he said – They're not that good of a football team. They're not. South Carolina, they're on the yeah. up and up. You got to watch yeah. out for South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, gonna... everybody thinks that that Spencer Rattler is gonna make a difference, but I just, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the hype. Uh-huh. They that, did a good that, job last year. They got they would, had a good first year under him. He wasn't so no I, good in Oklahoma. At Oklahoma, he got benched at Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, for some Caleb something or other. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> a different conference and not so much pressure. <laughs> not no. so much pressure. Yeah. Because South yeah, Carolina is not, is off. South Carolina is not meant to win the SEC. They have in the right. past, but they're not one of those teams that is, you know, an automatic film and not like a Tennessee or a Georgia or a Florida. It's, oh, South Carolina, they're just there. So South right. Carolina can quietly sneak up there and be a, they're a decent team in the SEC. I'm not saying they're a powerhouse, but sure, sure. They're not bad. Sure. They're not a bad football team. I mean, they're like Arkansas. They they could be the dark horse in the SEC East. See, if if they put Oklahoma in the SEC West, that means Texas is in the SEC East, which that doesn't really make too much sense because AM is in the West. So that's interesting how they put yeah. the Texas team in the West. A Texas team in the East, but like Adam said, by the time we get to that, they might rearrange the conferences. Rearrange. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen because there's already talk of doing away with with divisions and just having your conference champion. Okay, I like that. Too. Best two teams in the conference. Right, right. Well, guys, we have gone over the two hour mark. Is there anything else? Hey, I enjoyed it. About? I enjoyed it. Sure, you're always welcome, my man. You're anytime, always welcome Bradley. here anytime, man. Uh, you always welcome on my show too, Bradley. What what we usually do, Gerald, is at the end of the show is we always we give like Lou a chance to do his show. You can talk about your show too. I always give people an opportunity to talk about their shows because I got people that don't know who you are that I could get you get them to listen to your show and vice versa. So that's how I always. Look oh, at that's it. cool. That would be awesome. So, I mean, go right ahead. The floor is yours, sir. Lou, you go ahead. All right. I was going, you go first. But okay. Um, Enhanced Sports Show, Saturdays, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 to 6 Central, in Gerald's area, and all the rest of the Southeast United States. Um, Number call is 512-543-4662. I'll repeat it again, 512-543-4662. You know we're going to be talking the NBA Finals, of course. NHL coming down to its conference finals. Who's going to face against Colorado? And whoever does, I got two words to say about that. I'm sorry. Uh, the, well, look, they can, they can score. I mean, they score five goals a game at least. It's got to make us look pathetic. So I'll discuss that and the tragedy, and the tragedy to come. Uh, MLB baseball. Uh, the college uh, baseball players, which will keep on, which uh, goes to the end of the month. Uh, for you horse racing enthusiasts, the Belmont, the last race of the, of the big races this season. I can't forget that. Although people are thinking, why would you want to discuss, discuss that? But I'm going to discuss it anyway, like it or not. And so I have a whole bunch of that and a whole lot more. I'll do, we'll do some um, women's um, college uh, softball World Series action. That's getting pretty good. So um, if you got time on Saturday, 5 in the East, 4 Central, 
Enhanced Sports Show, 512-543-4662. Okay, Gerald, it's all yours. <laughs> Game winning sports talk show comes comes to you Thursdays from 5 to 7 uh, Central Standard Time, 6 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Numbers 512-543-4662. I repeat that again. That's 512-543-4662. We're going to have some hot topics going on again this week. So if you can make it, please do. And All right. I'll go, go, ahead. I'll go ahead and plug the uh, the uh, new um, feature we have here at the Walker Report. We have an official Instagram, the only Instagram of the Walker Report, the Walker Report underscore official on Instagram. Uh, for any of... Uh, Questions, comments, or concerns uh, regarding the show or uh, other opportunities that you'd like to invite us to have, you can email us at the Walker Report official at gmail.com. Also, I'm gonna I have a TikTok if I can plug my own plug my myself oh, real quick. Yeah. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna be drinking and playing the drums on TikTok. So I'm gonna go buy a big case of beer and we're gonna play drums and drink all day. That's the plan. And then uh, yeah, so that's uh um yeah i think my tiktok if i remember right is aries or adam manuel i don't remember what my damn tiktok is aries fourteen forty five over there on the tiktok so if you like drums if you like someone playing poorly playing the drums to metal music that they found on youtube come check that out um yeah, yeah. probably starting around seven tomorrow depending on what time i get up what time i go to and adam you walk and that's you what i got to come on to my show too Okay. I, I I can't promise I'll sit there quietly though. Uh, not a problem. <laughs> you and that. Me, we, we get we get crazy on my show. <laughs> we don't so come. We, All my writers have to go over tonight. So. We have well, fun on my show. With People that guy, yeah, well that I, I will have to say I uh I was on Lou's show last Saturday. Thank you for coming on. I uh before I went for coming on mine too with, for a little bit. I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come on Gerald next week and kind of get involved with the topics you were talking about. Uh next week. Uh, I will make sure that I do that. Um but I want to thank everyone that came on. I want to thank Kev Gerald. Thank you for coming on. Uh, uh sure, uh, no everyone, problem. Else, everyone else that commented, everyone else that came on, thank you for making Thursday nights awesome. Uh, you know, we yeah. were here. For you guys, this is fun for us. We do this for yeah, our fans and everyone else. We don't do this for for nothing. This is a hobby. We love to do it. We come here every week. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be back if again. If you wanted to pay us, we yeah. wouldn't turn it down. Yeah, that's, that's right. The, yeah. <laughs> well refused. That's, that's the – well, again, we, we, we had the whole, you know, fight between NGSC and in the sports. See how we do that. Yeah. Yeah. We plug both of them. Um, but, again wow. – uh, I am the sports sir, Bradley Walker. This has been the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio. Thanks to Kevin Dixon for coming on uh, earlier. Um, and then we are also part of NGSC Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSCSports.com for all your current sports content. And if you want to go over there, guys, I write a shit ton for them. My articles are over there. Yes. Please go over there and read them. Good writer. I, uh, I, I, I do. I, that's the one, one website I do write well for. Ralph has told me that my writing – has gotten a lot better. I got to meet him earlier this year too. That was awesome in Tennessee when I was in Tennessee. Uh, we will be back. Like I said, guys, we are on eight to 10 Eastern standard time in Gerald's world. That would be seven to seven nine, to nine. Uh, seven to 9 PM central time. Um, but other than that, we'll be back next week, guys, again, with all the topics we didn't talk about the College World Series, which is going on between Oklahoma and Texas. Go figure. Yes. That's the two teams that are in the College World Series for the women. And Oklahoma won 15 to 1. I yeah. think they scored 50 tonight. runs in the tournament, the most of all time. Yeah, I think I think I think the 50? game is tonight. Is the game you said tonight? 50? 5-0? Yeah. No. 5-0. Not in a single game. 50 overall. They've scored 50 oh, runs yeah. overall so far. In I thought you talking about one game. I'm fixing and six home runs in one game. Six home runs in one game. That's correct. They had six home runs in one game. But anyway, we will be back, guys, next week. We uh, always say thanks to the men and women of our armed services and our first responders. Thank you so much for keeping us safe abroad and uh, around the world. Until then, guys, I am the Sports Sir. Thank you. We love all of you guys. Until next Thursday, everyone stay safe. Peace. Cut, print, send it.
Yeah.